open your wallets and give me all of your monies. Yo, what's up, guys? How's everybody doing? How is everyone doing tonight? Oh shit, Oski Waski with the five gifted memberships. Really appreciate it, man. Big ups. Either 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 subscribe, really donate, appreciate that. or get the fuck out. Either 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 subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. Either 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 subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. Starting off with either, that either, uh, either subscribe, positivity, donate, or get man. the fuck out. Oh, 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 oh. Either 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 subscribe, <laughs> donate, or get the fuck out. Yeah, I heard about uh, Final Fantasy XIV getting ported to Xbox. It's about time, dude. Honestly, like, I would probably play that shit on console. Because I could play that before bed if I was, like... See, I could justify a membership fee if I started playing that shit, like, before bed. So, maybe I will get into Final Fantasy XIV. Actually. Because I already like the game. It's just I couldn't justify paying for it each month. Rick Rod with the one. You're broke! You're fucking poor! Oski will ask you about the two. I know DSP wakes up in a cold sweat when I... Yeah, especially because uh, recently he's been stressing about his membership numbers dropping, which is kind of funny. Yeah, I don't think DSP's support recently has been there. He's only making like $20 to $30 a stream recently, which... Uh-oh. I, like, I wonder how long it's going to take before the walls start closing in on him. Like, his simps have to run out of money at some point. They can't, like, ten people basically pay that man a six-figure salary. Like, it's fucking crazy. And that is his only income. So it's not like he has anything to fall back on. It's pretty wild. Plus, he's in all that debt. He owes, like, all that money in taxes. Like... He's really fucked, honestly. He has no savings. The only thing he has is equity in his house, which I don't think is too much. Because I think, like, his whole plan was to make DSP reacts, like, his retirement plan, basically. Like, he was hoping that channel was going to take off and basically, you know, either introduce him to a new audience... Or, like, diversify his content enough to where people basically double dip. Where it's like, oh, they'll support my gaming streams and they'll support my React content. So it, like, would double his income, essentially. Which did not translate. Well, I think he has a uh, townhouse or whatever in Seattle, where he lives now. The condo in Connecticut, yes. He should have never moved out of that condo in Connecticut. If he would have kept that $80,000 condo, just paid it off and then lived in it rent-free and banked all of his money from content creation, he'd be in a great financial position, even right now. But he blew it all, so... Lived above his means, took out two mortgages, essentially, racked up a shit ton of credit card debt, blew all his money on mobile games, like... Pretty sad. Pretty sad. But, you know, some people just cannot help themselves. I'm a specialist in DSP's life. That's right, man. It is a fascinating rabbit hole to go down. It is an absolute like once you once you take the plunge into the DSP rabbit hole, dude, you like it just completely consumes you. 
It is one of the most fascinating things you'll ever fucking learn about in your life. The story of DSP. Like, it is, like, fascinating. Because, I mean, there's not really many examples of someone that basically was at the top of the game in YouTube at his peak for gaming content and had such a massive fall from grace and is still somewhat holding on. Yeah, I learned about DSP from... I'm trying to remember who it was. I think it was uh, Mr. Mediker. Is who introduced me to DSP originally. His video on, like, the catfishing scenario. Oski Woski with the two. I wish YouTube had hype train like Twitch has. Yeah, they need... That's the thing I don't get. YouTube could add, like, a lot of those really nice features that Twitch has. And they could basically completely just wipe the floor with them, live streaming wise, I feel like. I mean, the stream quality on YouTube's already way better. If they could just like tweak the chat a little bit, add like those different features that Twitch has built in, like YouTube could easily just curb stomp Twitch. Yeah, channel points I think are like, that is something I don't understand why YouTube does not have. That seems like such a no-brainer. No, they can't sue them. There's nothing proprietary about chat features. I don't think we ever got to the low tier god stuff, but I saw that uh, Dick Stroke and Phil Vlogs uploaded a uh, video on it, so we'll probably check that out tonight. He makes very good videos on DSP because they're like super highly edited and you know all the filler crap is cut out. Thoughts on Forex? I mean, you can make money from it, but I think there's better ways to make money. Most people lose money on Forex. Like, think about it this way. For every person that makes money on a Forex transaction, there has to be someone that loses money or multiple people that lose money. So, unless you can literally beat the odds and consistently come out on the winning side, you're going to end up losing money overall. So... Twitter has been destroyed. I know, man. It's great. I actually like the icon a lot better. It looks way cleaner on my home screen. I like the X logo personally a lot more. Why is it a brain-dead decision, man? It gets people talking about it. It's a great marketing move. Everyone's already fucking using it anyway. It's not like anyone's gonna stop using Twitter because it changes its name. If anything, it's only gonna bring new people in because people will be talking about Twitter changing its name. And then people will, oh, I wanna look that up. Oh my god, it is called X now. Oh, like... If anything, it's gonna boost engagement.
Just downloaded Twitter for the first time because of it? Yeah, exactly, man. It's like free publicity, basically. Because you got the fucking screeching tards upset that they changed the name of an app. Like, who fucking cares? It's the exact same app. There's literally no difference in the functionality between Twitter and X. It's the exact same user experience. They literally just changed the logo and the name of the app on your phone. Like, the only people actually upset over that are fucking clowns, bro. Like, honestly. You're actually really cringe just whining about Biden and listening to lo-fi music from 2016. Oh, dude, you really owned me. What the fuck does that even mean? Oh, wait, it doesn't mean anything, because... <laughs> You're fucking retarded. <laughs> You know, Sony is a liberal company. Really? Sony is a liberal company and so is Microsoft? Thanks, man. I, I didn't realize that. Thanks for clearing that up, dude. I would have never known. I was spreading misinfo yesterday. What was I spreading misinformation on? Please inform me. What am I uh, spreading misinformation on, man? Let me know so I can uh, fix that, dude. I don't want to be uh, spreading fake news. Oh, your mom? Oh, wow, dude. That's fucking hilarious. Jesus Christ. I don't know, man. No recovery from that one. Uh, Lord Pothead Investor with the two X is better, it's shorter and easier to say. Yep, and it's gonna get a shit ton of publicity. Plus, Elon owns X.com. Like, how the fuck... It doesn't get any better than that for a domain name. Griffin Gaming sounds like a boomer gaming channel. Thanks, bro. Is your name Napalm because you come with the sick fucking fire roast, dude? Hell yeah. Oh my god. Dude, Xbox and Microsoft are definitely, definitely fucking liberal companies. Microsoft is like the biggest current thing driver in the tech industry. I mean, look at fucking Bill Gates, dude. That guy literally wants to fucking kill people to prevent climate change. Microsoft spends more time on their fucking Pride logo than quality assuring their own fucking first party games, dude. Like.
Yeah, they removed their Pride logo a couple days in and then replaced it with the uh, Diablo one, which everyone thought was them saying that gay people are going to burn in hell. That shit was weak. Napalm is probably angry because his mom is at the bar and he's going to watch his three little sisters. Oh, no, probably the thing is, is his mom's at the bar and she's going to bring another strange man home and he's going to have to listen to her getting fucking railed all night through their paper-thin walls. Chances of Biden getting impeached and convicted? Uh, zero percent. That shit ain't gonna happen, man. I, th I don't think there should be an age limit for politicians. I think there should be term limits. I think senators should only be allowed to serve two terms and house members should only be allowed to serve four. Personally. I think senators should have a two term limit and house of representative members should have a four term limit. Personally. I think the idea of a career politician is a terrible one. Lord Pod had investor with the two. Biden is about done. His health is getting worse. Oh, it doesn't matter, dude. They're going to give him the Adolf Hitler treatment where they shoot him up with, like, fucking meth and coke and all sorts of shit. Like a drug cocktail that, like, supercharges like supercharges his brain so that he can go and give speeches when necessary and then they basically just keep him in his bed all day resting because that's what they did with hitler towards the end of world war ii the dude was like coked out of his fucking mind he took uh morning meth injections like the guy was absolutely a fucking like just meat puppet so they're going to do the same shit with Biden, most likely, if they're not already doing it. They'll just prop him up on stage when they need him to, and then he'll just basically <laughs> sit like a vegetable behind the scenes otherwise. So, no, they're... The thing is, is they will not let Biden die until it, like, unless he gets reelected, man, they're not letting him die. Oh yeah, dude, look it up. Like Hitler took these massive amounts of drugs every single day, like direct injections. You can look it up, man. His doctor wrote down like his daily prescription and everything. It's fucking wild. I mean, most of Nazi Germany was, like, literally a bunch of fucking meth heads because they all took meth pills to stay awake and get work done. That's why the uh, Blitzkrieg or whatever the fuck, you know, the German military was known for was called and so effective is because, like, they would give their soldiers meth tablets, which would allow them to stay awake for three days at a time so they could cover like this insane amount of distance and march and like drive the tanks and vehicles for like these insane amounts of time because everybody was like fucking doped up high on meth so it's pretty crazy 
I, I forget what it's called. There was like a pill that was like the best selling drug in Nazi Germany. Like, vermit. I forget what it's called. You can look it up. But it's like literally an amphetamine tablet. And it was completely legal. It'd be like going and buying Advil nowadays. But yeah, it was an amphetamine tablet. And most of Nazi Germany popped that shit like, you know, a fucking cigarette, basically. You know, instead of smoking a cigarette, they would pop a meth tablet. It's fucking crazy, dude. It's like pervitin or something like that. I forget what it's called. But yeah, that's a real thing. That's why the Nazis are so fucking batshit crazy, dude. They're a bunch of meth heads. Yeah, like, Hitler was literally a fucking, like, vegetable by the end of World War II. Like, he was in his bunker, like, ordering around, like, different, like, battalions of troops that didn't fucking exist. You know, he thought, like, the German front was still, like, all the way out to its, like, outer limits. Even towards the end, when literally he was in his bunker having to basically hide because, you know, Germany was falling. Like, he was, like, fucking crazy, dude. I mean, he already was crazy, but, like, absolutely fucking just, like, unaware cognitively. He basically became a fucking schizo. All that fucking meth cooked his brain. Yeah, so the uh, drug was called Pervitin. That was the uh, that was the tablet that they would pop. It's called Pervitin. I mean, we used to give our um, pilots in World War II amphetamine tablets to fucking take, so they wouldn't fall asleep flying. So it's not unheard of. Pretty crazy though, man. Literally, we're giving our fucking troops method, fucking, <laughs> you know, addictions. Shit's crazy. We were, like, basically training a bunch of methods. Well, it's not that it makes them fight harder, it keeps them awake. That's the thing. They weren't super soldiers, they were just like fucking high. If anything, their cognitive ability was greatly impaired. So, can't really make great decisions when you're high on fucking meth.
Well, the Nazi leadership would drop acid and shit like that because they thought their hallucinations were like communications with the divine. Because the Nazis like practiced the occult and everything like that. So, like Hitler had like all these different like attempts to try and contact like supernatural powers and forces and ancient gods and everything like that to try and get like some supernatural advantage in the war. Shit was crazy, dude. Like, <laughs> these motherfuckers were wild, bruh. And then Hitler was, like, paying for, like, this extinct German fucking hunting animal. So, like, there was this old, like, animal that the uh, barbarian German tribes would have hunted, like, back in, like, I think 200 BC or something like that. And basically they were trying to recreate that animal so that Hitler and the top Nazi leadership could go on to like a nature reserve and hunt like their ancestors did. Like, it's fucking, dude, they had so much weird shit going on. Yeah, I forgot what it was. I think I was homesick one day and like the History Channel actually when they used to have like actual history on there other than like fucking Las Vegas businesses. Uh, <laughs> they had like a, this like weird fucking uh, series about Hitler and the occult and everything like that. And it was really fucking interesting, man. Like, that's where the inspiration for Indiana Jones came from, is, like, all the weird shit the Nazis were actually doing in World War II. Like, most of that shit could actually be considered based on a true story. I mean, Indiana Jones obviously isn't fucking real, but... All the Nazi attempts to find, like, the Ark of the Covenant, the Holy Grail, all that type of shit, 100% real. The Nazis dumped a shit ton of resources into those efforts. That's why they even, like, invaded particular continents. Like, they literally diverted their military forces to conquer specific nations to look for those artifacts. Yeah, they were looking for Atlantis. They were looking for, like, the lost records of the Library of Alexandria. Like, all sorts of wild shit, dude. Yeah, they collected, like, ancient antiquities and pieces of art and everything. Yep. But it's pretty crazy, man. One of the two, Melanie is based AF. Uh oh. Is this a uh, non Review Tech USA approved take? Dare I say it, hateful cunt! Elijah Petty with the five. Um, can you have too much fuck you money? Wait. Can having too much fuck you money be a hindrance such as Elon Musk in relation to his Twitter manage? Ah, I don't think it's a negative thing ever, man. Like, the more money you have, the more freedom you have. I mean, the reason why Elon Musk can buy a company like Twitter and do whatever the fuck he wants with it, you know, is basically because he's got more money than he knows what to do with. I mean, Twitter could go bankrupt tomorrow, and from a financial standpoint, he's fucking completely fine. So. I mean, it'd be like a financial hit, but at the end of the day, man, at that point, does money even matter? Like, is a couple extra billion dollars in Elon Musk's bank account really going to make a significant impact on him? Probably not, man. Once you have a billion dollars, you don't really need much more money after that. 
anything more than that is just you literally just dicking around and having fun. Like, that's basically the definition of a fun coupon. Damn, bro. I'm hoping I have to take a shit. It's been too long, man. Like, that's the thing, is I don't really think your life dramatically improves after you have $100 million. I feel like that's kind of the cap. Like, once you have $100 million, unless you're just buying, like, literal fucking palatial homes all over the world, what exactly is, like, going to dramatically improve in your life from that point forward? So it's like anything after that, it's like a certain point where it's like, well, I might as well have fun with this money and try to build something with it, you know? Because worst case is you still have your hundred million. It's like, oh, whatever, you know? Who fucking cares? I never have to work another day in my life. I got a hundred million dollars in the bank, so anything I spend and blow past that, who cares? So, oh, shit. Pot and a messer with the five. If Elon Musk makes Mars ha um, habitable, he'll be the most significant person of this. I don't think that's occurring anytime soon. To make Mars habitable, we would have to literally find a way to create an artificial atmosphere, which I don't think technologically we are at that point. I mean, he could set up like resource extraction operations on Mars. That's feasible, but terraforming a planet's a little beyond our technological grasp at the moment. I think if he like established the first, I guess, permanent kind of structure and infrastructure on Mars for resource extraction, he would be the wealthiest man on planet Earth. And technically in the galaxy, right? <laughs> <laughs> If we were to terraform Mars right now, would you go? Oh, fuck yeah, dude. That's like the new gold rush. Fuck yes, man. Like, think about it this way, guys. Every single mineral deposit that we have on Earth, Mars has the exact same, if not more. Like, all the gold, platinum, silver, diamonds, everything. Fucking uranium. Um, what's that other one? What's that shit called? Lithium. That's the other one. Lithium. That's a big money maker. Yeah, zinc. All the mineral deposits of Earth, Mars has just as much, if not more. You would literally be the biggest, like, wealthiest motherfucker on planet Earth and Mars if you owned the mining operations of Mars. So, yeah. I would definitely go there. I mean, if you could breathe on Mars and not worry about getting burned alive, then yeah. I'd go up there. Why not? Make me some money.
Oh yeah, the first person to like establish a mining operation on Mars would be considered the first trillionaire. Easily. I mean, technically we already have trillionaires, but they're like the Saudis and Putin and people like that, so. From just a business perspective, you would be the first like multi-trillionaire. It'd be like that movie Dune, basically, where you control, like, the mining operations and basically you control all the wealth. But, like, think about it. You could get, like, plots of land on Mars that was recently, like, terraformed. You could buy, like, country-sized plots of land for probably cheap as fuck, run mineral extractions on those plots of land, and as the terraforming takes hold, eventually all of those lands would become, like, arable, and you could farm on them, create resources, have water purification plants, electric power plants, like all sorts of shit. And then you could provide those services to the other like places on the planet basically and just establish like this insane amount of wealth by being there at the beginning. Like think about how wealthy the fucking British royal family is because they own almost all the real estate in downtown London. Well, back then, you know, London was not super fucking developed like it is, but over time, you know, the value of that property is basically ensured the British royal family will never need to fucking work another day in their life because they make like billions of dollars a year pretty much off their property. I don't know, dude. That shit would be pretty awesome. You could be like a fucking noble on Mars, pretty much. It would be almost like a new nobility kind of system. That shit would be neat. No, I don't think animals would mutate because if we terraformed Mars properly, it would just basically match Earth's atmosphere. So, it would basically be an identical planet. The problem is, is we don't have the technology to terraform yet, so that shit ain't coming anytime soon. Won't be in our lifetime. Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. Dude, I would 100% have a bunch of lowly plebs working under me. Let's see, Jethro with the one month watch for DEA. Well, DEA has got to recommend his own video, bro. The fuck? Also, I'm Key is a massive fanook and Brit is fat and Dark City will never be cured of Trump derangement syndrome. Fair enough. I'll see what the video is, but I make no promises. There are other golden worlds. Mass Effect prove that. Dude, point me to the planet of the Asari. I'll head there right now. Banging blue bitches 24 7.
Yeah, I still believe my theory is correct, though. Eventually, like the Asari, if they did exist, the entire galaxy would become Asari because it's like literally an entire planet of single blue chicks that need another fucking race of alien to reproduce with, pretty much. So eventually, there would just become so many Asari that every other species would just basically hook up with them, and that's all that would be left. Then we would truly have the matriarchy, guys. We would truly have the matriarchy. Like, there would just be a complete and total shortage of men in the galaxy. It would just all be women. Would I smash a vampire with a wooden stake? Yeah. Dude, if I was Elon Musk, I would buy, like, a bunch of media franchises. I feel like that would be more, uh, beneficial in terms of, like, making money. Like, Elon should have bought something, like, you know, he could have bought, like, I know he's a big, like, Deus Ex fan. Like, he should have bought the IP for Deus Ex from Square Enix. Or he should have bought, like, CD Projekt Red. Or he could have bought the rights to Lord of the Rings instead of Embracer. Like, something like that, dude. I would just buy some shit like that. You know, you're spending a lot less money and the ROI is much higher in terms of potential. Versus spending $40 billion on one fucking social media platform that's barely profitable. But, yeah. I don't know, man. What's an ROI? Return on investment. Yeah, I got this really cool Wing Dragon of Ra card today in the mail. It's the uh, 25th anniversary quarter century rare Wing Dragon of Ra. It's pretty cool. It's got like this really neat hollow effect all over the card, and it has like a stamp on it that's in the hollow as well. This is 25th. Pretty neat. Dude, if I was Elon, I would buy Yu-Gi-Oh! and make it actually fun again. There you go. That's what I would do, guys. I would buy Konami and make Yu-Gi-Oh! actually fucking fun again. Get rid of all the bullshit fucking Pendulum, X, Y, Z, fucking <laughs> all that dog shit, bro. I would just make Yu-Gi-Oh! simple again and stonk. And then make, like, you know... Because basically, if you own a card game that's popular, it's a license to print your own currency, pretty much. Think about it. Like, Nintendo and the Pokemon Company literally print money every time they print trading cards. Like, Nintendo could literally just say, oh, we're going to make a million fucking, you know, Altart cards and then sell them themselves on eBay for like a hundred bucks a piece. They basically turned, like, $100,000 worth of paper into $100 million just by doing that. So, you literally have a license to print money, pretty much, if you have a popular TCG. So, I think that'd be cool. I would love to run a TCG company, and I think Yu-Gi-Oh! is probably 
my personal favorite out of like trading cards. But yeah, that'd be cool. I would love to be in charge of that. I would actually make Yu-Gi-Oh fun. <laughs> like it used to be. Not this fucking super autistic one turn game that it turned into. Skull, wait, Scholar, Crawler, Bandicoot? Ah, uh, the balloon's blocking it. I think that's what it is. My dad mentioned how our tech uses alien tech. Uh-oh. That's right, man. The 5G chips are actually from the fucking uh, little gray men with the big black eyes and the big BBCs. Would I buy Pokemon? Uh, if I could, I would love to own Pokemon. If I had that type of money, yes, I would. But I don't think I could afford Pokemon. You'd have to have, like, close to probably $100 billion to buy Pokemon. Eh, uh, maybe not that much. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know how much Pokemon's worth. It's worth a shit ton of money, though. Let's see. How much is the Pokemon company worth around? Oh, that's valuation. And that makes no sense. So the value of the Pokemon company they're trying to say is 975 million, but it's made a hundred billion dollars in revenue. That makes no fucking sense. Yeah, I would say like probably like 50 billion ish would be the price of Pokemon if you were to outright buy the Pokemon company. But Nintendo, I don't think ever wants to sell it because they like how it draws people into their console. So as long as Nintendo owns a huge chunk of it, I don't think it'll ever be sold. Because, like, the thing is, is Pokemon is a gateway to Nintendo's platforms. No, so the Pokemon franchise has made $92 billion, but the value of a company is not how much revenue it brings in. Total. It's basically the profit, typically, um, times an industry multiplier. So, since it's technically like a tech company, so to say, because they make video games and, you know, it's a media company, you're looking at probably like a 5 to 10x multiplier, depending on the offer. So, you're probably looking, like, let's say Pokemon makes $2 billion a year in profit. I mean... Technically, it'd be worth about 20 billion, but just because of the IP value, well, that would probably drastically inflate it. Uh, Scholar Crawler? Oh, wait, no. Wait. Did I say the right? Scholar Clawer Bandicoot. Okay, there we go. You're broke! You're fucking poor! You got a neck tattoo? Uh oh. Don't get a face tat, bro. Neck tattoos and face tattoos are not a good idea. That will hurt you in the professional world. If you can't cover up your tattoos, that can dramatically hinder your ability to do well in like the world of business if you have any plans on like moving up to upper management or anything. So just be careful with that, man.
Dude, getting a tattoo removed is more painful and expensive than getting it put on. And it takes a long time. It's not like a, oh, I shined a light on it, it's gone. It takes months of treatment to get rid of it. Well, dude, that's the thing, though, I Siler, is one day you could get, like, an offer, like, oh, you've been working here for a while. How would you like to apply for a role in management? Like, that does happen, so just keep it in mind. Like, for instance, in Japan, if you have tattoos, a lot of Japanese people won't talk to you if you ever plan on going there, because, you know, especially if you have, like, neck tats and shit, that's like Yakuza shit. Yeah, I don't know. Personally, I would never fucking have somebody draw on my body with permanent ink. That ain't for me. But to each their own, man. It's your life to live. Well, you'd be alright, Isiler, if you went to, like, Tokyo. They're pretty pretty accepting there it's just more like the rural and smaller cities in japan where you run into the problem if you're black but tokyo typically it's okay but like if you're like fully tatted up and shit like that that might actually pose a problem Basically, all right, so if you're wondering how the japanese view whatever race you're talking about if you are another type of Asian other than Japanese, they dislike you. The darker your skin, generally speaking, the less they like you. If you're white, they like you, but they don't want you to live there, if that makes sense. That is my understanding from a Japanese guy I talked to, is basically how he explained it. They don't like other Asians, the darker your skin, the worse off you're going to be in Japan. And then white people they like, but they don't want you moving there. They just want you to visit. That was what a uh, Japanese exchange student I talked to explained to me. Nope, Xbox has never had Final Fantasy XIV. Oh, I think the chat's dead again. Rip. Dude, I wonder what the fuck's wrong with YouTube and chat recently. Like, it's been like a couple weeks that this issue's been going on. Holy fuck, man. I may have to go try to take a shit, dude. This is bad. I've been like fucking pounding water today. Bro, it's so boring without the chat to fucking read. YouTube needs to fix this shit. There it goes. Now it's working. Dude, this shit's annoying. I Siler with the 10. That's interesting to know for Japanese, and I'm not surprised. My neck one, you can't see it. It's next to my collarbone. No way I'm doing my face. I do Asian escorts. <laughs> <laughs> bro you gotta bag an actual uh asian wife bro
Just think, dude. Instead of blowing your money on escorts, you could just get, like, an Asian girlfriend and then buy her a bunch of shit, and then, you know, you can get that shit on the daily. You don't have to pay the hourly rate. Hey, I've never streamed on YouTube with zero viewers, man. I've uploaded videos that have gotten zero views in, like, the first few days, but... PewDiePie has never interested me either. I don't care about him. The whole Reddit reaction content genre never interested me, and screeching at retarded video games has never interested me either. Yeah, I saw her. You need to go, like, uh, try and date, like, an Asian chick or something in your area. I find that hard to believe that there's not a lot of Asian women in Colorado. Like, in the Denver area, I'm sure there's a lot, dude. In pretty much any major city in the U.S., there's a lot of Asian people, at least that I've seen. I don't know. Usually when you have, like, big cities like that, I mean, Denver is pretty close to the West Coast as well, so. You should have a lot. I don't know, man. But yeah, I would quit blowing your money on escorts and see if you can find some uh, wifey material, my guy. China versus USA? Are you talking militarily? Us. It would be a fucking clean sweep, bro. The Chinese can't transport their troops. They're a landlocked military. I mean, I see a ton of Asian women in the D.C. area. Like, we have a ton of them up here. Hold on, let's see. Colorado racial... So, Colorado demographics, white, 81%, two or more races, 6%, black, 4%, other race, 4%, and Asian, 3%. So, y'all definitely have some. Let's see what uh, Denver's. Denver racial... Damn, man. The Hispanic population in Denver is huge. I'm trying to see. I'm looking. Why don't they have Asians? They have, like, the raw number, but... Demographics of Denver.
Denver is about 4% Asian. Interesting. So, I mean, technically, there's not statistically that much less, like, Asian people in Colorado versus black people, so... Should be a similar number, man. I don't know. You should be looking at a pretty, uh, you know, decent amount. Or you may just have to drive to a different state. I don't know, bro. But save that money from paying for escorts and like try and like actually bag a uh, Asian baddie of your own. I don't know. The whole concept of paying for an escort just seems like just a money pit. Escorts are not cheaper in the long run, the fuck? Especially if your uh, significant other works. Like, that's the thing a lot of people don't consider about not getting married, is you're actually putting yourself at a financial disadvantage versus people who have two income homes. Like, think about it this way. Like, if half of your paycheck every month goes towards your living expenses and cost of living, you could take your half of your paycheck and then your significant other's, like, entire paycheck and use that money to, like, invest and grow your wealth or purchase a house or whatever. Or start a business. Like, that's the thing. Like, you just have a lot more money to play with. Your cost of living goes down basically in half, and your income increases by double. So, there's actually a very large financial advantage if you have, like, a two-income household and you're married. Like, just splitting the rent alone is already a huge fucking cost saver. Like, say your rent's two grand a month, and, you know, all of a sudden, you and her are splitting it. Well, now you have an extra $1,000 a month to do with what, as you please. So. When people say there's, like, no benefit to getting married or dating or any of that type of shit, like, I don't believe that. Personally. I gotta buy something real quick. Now, there was a card that was just listed. Somebody DM'd me and was like, hey, man, there's this card that just got listed on eBay. So, yeah, I just bought it. One of my uh, contacts in the uh, Pokemon community, bro, 
so. I had to scoop that bitch up. I'm so pumped to see Spongebob. Is that a real thing? Damn, man. Spongebob the musical. I mean, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. If you try to approach women here, you'll get pepper spray. In your really? What the f in Missouri? I thought Missouri was pretty normal. Guess not. Damn, man. I thought Missouri was like pretty normal as a state. I didn't think they were full of like a bunch of like you know, uh, feminists or whatever. But maybe they are. Am I going to get anything? Uh, I'll probably buy a couple booster boxes of it when it drops to 90 bucks, but I'm not going to open any, like, any of it myself. Oscar Rodriguez with the two. Good night, folks. Off to my 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. drive. Well, good luck to you, man. Appreciate you stopping by. I silo with the 10. My stance on escorts or relationships, it depends on how often. And for me, I don't care for relationships. And I'm old now, lol. I'll see maybe four escorts a year. Drive 70 miles a day. Hardly see Asian. Hmm. I mean, dude, at that point, you could always go the uh, mail order bride approach. Well, not really mail order bride, but you could just like go on one of those uh, dating fucking trips like that they have to like Vietnam and places like that or the Philippines and see if you can go uh, bag a uh, Asian baddie and bring her back to the US if you're at that point. No, not like an actual passport, bro. The passport bros go to fucking those countries just to get laid because they can't get laid in the U.S. It's kind of different if you're looking for, like, you know, a wife, I feel like. It's a little different. Did you hear Ice Spice had a minor twerking in her music video? I don't really think that's that big of a deal. Unless the minor is like wearing a fucking thong or some shit. I don't really see that as an issue. Dude, most fucking teenage girls fucking twerk. Like, it's just a dance. 
Unless she's wearing like a fucking G-string or some shit like that in the music video. I don't really think that's that big a deal. I'm keys donating for Violet Myers. Yay! Yippee. Elijah Petty with the two marriage is similar to economies of scale. Yeah, in a way. Dude, that's the thing. Honestly, like, makes me kind of want to date because it's like, bro. If I had two, well, technically I already have two incomes. If I had three incomes right now, dude, I would be like a fucking unstoppable force financially. Like completely fucking unstoppable, man. Like if I had more capital to fuck around with in terms of like business ventures and investing and shit like that and buying properties, like I'd be just done. I could be checked out, finished with the game of life at like age 32, easily. I saw her with the 10, I'm 31. Well, dude, you're not that fucking old. You're in your prime as a guy, honestly. Like most men actually reach their peak attractiveness in their early 30s, so technically you're at your prime, my guy. You're not that old. I stopped caring a while ago. The only thing, though, I would like to adopt a kid. Well, as a single man, that's literally impossible. Because, unfortunately, a bunch of fucking disgusting pedophiles, you know, adopted a bunch of kids and got busted. So now, if you go to adopt a child as a single man, it's, like, literally fucking impossible. Um, it's probably due to how it was always me and my mom before she died. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like, I feel like you're still in your prime, my guy. 31 is not that old for men. Like, as a chick, yeah, that's kind of, you know, getting up there. But dudes? No, most men hit their prime in their early 30s. Like, most 22-year-old girls are dating 30-year-old men nowadays. So, if anything, bro, you're in your, like, prime. You're making good money. You have a good job. You know, you're financially stable. So, you're actually very desirable to a lot of chicks out there. So, I wouldn't uh, sell yourself short on that one, my guy. You're pretty much in what's considered to be the prime of a guy's life. I saw her with a five. Are you serious? Wow, pedo actually left. Well, the thing is, they don't know they're pedophiles until they adopt the kids. That's the problem. Is like you have these single guys that would adopt kids because they're attracted to kids. So what better way to, you know, take out their desires than to adopt like a male or female child and basically rape them? It's pretty fucked up, but yeah. So they had to crack down on single people, you know, adopting children because there was like a very fucking sad and unfortunate, you know, <laughs> basically pattern that was evolving that these creepy single guys, even single women too, like single women have a hard time adopting children as well. Typically you have to be like an existing married couple without a criminal record. It's very hard to adopt. But, yeah, there was a big issue with it, so. I'm key with the five. You already know what it is, by the way. Give me a kiss. Uh, if I know what it is, I don't want to give you a kiss, bro. Save it for Violet. Violet. 
Do gay couples get have a good chance? Ah, uh, it depends on the state. In most states, no. Like in California, they probably would have an easier time, but in most states, no. Very rarely. You have to have like a perfect fucking record. You can't even have like a speeding ticket in a lot of cases. It's very fucking hard. And you can only adopt within a certain age range and the child has to be okay with it. Like there's a lot that goes into like the whole like same sex couples adopting. At that point, you're better off paying for like a donor or whatever. So basically you would like pay to have like some chick carry your kid for you and give birth to it. So you'd basically take either your sperm or your husband's sperm you would pick which one wants to pass down their genetics and you would pay a chick to basically carry your child for you. And then once the child's born, you take it and then, you know, bring it home. That's what most, uh, I guess, same sex couples do. Or, you know, basically lesbians will go to the sperm bank, get some sperm. One of them will get impregnated, give birth, and then that's the child. So. That's how it works, usually. They can't typically adopt. It's very hard to adopt in the United States, which is kind of odd because we have a ton of kids that need to be adopted, but you know, fucked up people ruin it. Would I adopt? Um, it would depend on where I am in life, but I wouldn't be opposed to it, I guess. Like, if I had a bunch of money, like, sure, I guess that wouldn't be a bad thing to do. It all kind of depends on, I guess, like where I am at life at the time, who I'm married to, and how many kids I already have and how much money I have, too. How old is too old to pursue a relationship? Dead. Like, bro, my fucking grandma who's like 80 is dating again, so it's never too late. Did I watch Piers Morgan interview with Pearly? Nope. <laughs> I mean, I think it's admirable people who adopt, dude. Like, there's a lot of kids out there that don't have a fair shot in life or, you know, were dealt a shitty fucking hand. And if you can help them out, you know set them up for success. I think that's a very noble thing to do. How do old people have sex? Viagra. I don't fucking know. I'll let you know when I get there. I saw there with the 10. I should look into it here in Colorado. I do want to adopt a kid like Soldier Boy and show the boys said raise them to be real men not this sissy society we live in now nasty drag queens it's good that shit's so fucking degen but dude honestly you should take a crack at just like dating or whatever like you are literally in your prime my guy 
you could literally probably bag like some 25 year old chick start a family with her and then you could adopt on top of that fairly easily so i don't know dude i wouldn't sell yourself short i mean you're financially pretty stable from what you've described you have a good job you make good money you know go for it Griffin is washed up in a pretty much, man. I may be physically 25, but I'm like mentally 80. already white. That's right, dude. <laughs> I'm aging with grace. Ruby with the two Netflix rumored doing Dark Souls anime thoughts. I won't be watching. I'd rather play Dark Souls than watch it. Maybe the TV show will actually force them to write a complete fucking story for that franchise. That could be interesting. People like the Castlevania anime or whatever the fuck that Netflix did though, so it seems like they do a decent job at making uh, video game adaptations in the uh, anime art style. And people love like the fucking cyberpunk one. They like the League of Legends one. So it seems like Netflix is pretty good at making that type of shit. It's anime, of course it's fucking dumb. I, Siler, with a 10, I do agree with being married due to income advantage in this expensive world we live in now. A couple making 50k each is definitely manageable in states like tech. Yeah, no, 100%, man. I mean, the thing is, dude, is you're going to have a better, I feel like naturally everyone is happier when they have like, I guess a life partner in a sense. I mean, that's the whole reason why you buy an escort even is like, you know, you want someone to spend time with and, you know, enjoy the <laughs> sexy time in the bed. Like, I don't know, man. Like, that's the thing is like everybody kind of yearns for that shit. I don't know, but dude, I would just give a shot like to dating and see how it goes. Yeah. 
You could have sexy time all the time, bro. Maybe one day... Well, dude, there's somebody for everyone. Remember, dude, DSP got married, so... If he can do it, any of us can. Believe it. Like Naruto said, bro. Yep, Wings is married. DSP is married. Boogie was married, and now he's bagged a fucking 20-year-old chick, so... Dude, if Boogie can bag a semi-attractive 20-year-old chick, like, dog, anything is possible. I sell her with a five. Yep, you make a point. No one can be alone forever and enjoy it unless you're a serial killer. Exactly. But even then, they need to be around people in order to kill them because, you know, they get off on that. So even then, they need other people. So, I don't know, dude. Like, just give it a shot. I mean, worst case that happens is you can just go back to doing what you've been doing. But... Not to sound like a broken record, bro, but a dude in their, like, early 30s is considered to be in their prime. They're making money, they're financially stable, they're mentally mature for the most part, and that is the age that most 22-year-olds to 25-year-olds are looking for nowadays And guys because they want dudes that are established in their careers, making money, and are mentally mature because men mature much slower than women do. So it's like a natural thing that younger women are attracted to older men because they're on the same maturity level, mentally. So, I would give it a shot, man. Like... Hell no, I'm not dating, bro. I work, work out, and uh, stream video games on YouTube. Like I said, don't live by my example. I am not someone's lifestyle that you should want to replicate. <laughs> like, if I was not wired the way I am mentally, like, I'm pretty sure I would have blown my fucking brains out if I had, like, a normie mentality of, like, needing, like, fucking socialization and that type of shit like if I if my mind is not the way that it was and I had like more of a normie mentality and I lived like this lifestyle I live now I'd probably have blown my fucking brains out by now so you don't really want to replicate my lifestyle For most people, it would be very fucking lonely, depressing, repetitive, and unrewarding. But, I don't know, I don't mind it, so. Clearly, you have Gucci and a $4,000 PC by 20... Well, dude, that's not that big a deal. You're talking about, like, $10,000 total. Like, anybody can make ten grand by the age of 25. What is my lifestyle? Well, I wake up at 8, sign into my work laptop, work until like 5 or 6, take my dog for a two-hour walk, come back, fix dinner, go to the gym for an hour to an hour and a half every single night, come home and stream until like 3 a.m. Then I go to bed, fall asleep around 4, wake up at 8 the next day. Rinse and repeat. That is basically my entire fucking schedule. That's pretty much all I do. I don't go out. I don't, like, do anything, really. I don't go out to eat. I just literally work, work out, and stream. With, like, three to four hours of sleep each night. So, if that sounds like the ideal life to you then maybe you could do it, but I don't think a lot of people could. Because the other thing is, too, is I work remote, so I maybe have, like, five minutes of interaction with other people per day. 
in terms of like communication. Like there are certain days where if there's not a front desk person at the fucking gym, I don't even talk to somebody. So, yeah. If there's no one at the front desk when I arrive at the gym, the amount of time I spend actually speaking to another person is zero minutes per day. And even then, on the days that I do, it's like 10 seconds, so. That's the thing, man. It, it's not for everybody. Like, a lot of people would go fucking crazy. Like, a lot of people would not be able to do that. It is not a lifestyle for most people. I sell it with the 10. That's what I was getting at. It'll change later. And that's why I was always comfortable just working 12 hours a day and playing games for years. It'll hit you, man. Be right. Oh, I know. Well, it already kind of does, man. Like, honestly, like if I had something else to do, like going on a date or some shit like that, I would much rather do that than like go to the fucking gym every night or you know, live stream until 3 a.m., but it's just kind of like priorities, you know what I mean? What do I do on the weekends? Catch up on my sleep, go to the gym, walk my dog stream. That's about it. So like tonight, I'll probably get off stream around 4 a.m. I'll go to sleep wake up around 4 p.m., go to the fucking gym, then come back, walk my dog for like an hour or two, and then fix dinner and probably start streaming. That is typically my weekend. p.m. Well, I got to catch up on my sleep, man. That's the thing. I got to catch up on my sleep at some point, and the only time I have time to do it is on the weekend. So instead of actually doing stuff on the weekends because I'm, like, fucking sleep deprived during the fucking week, you know, I just sleep for, like, 12 hours straight on the weekends. So that's how I, like, I guess maintain my current schedule is I have to be able to catch up on my sleep over the weekend, otherwise I'm like a fucking zombie. But yeah, the thing is, dude, it's not like there's anything that I'm like pressed to go do on the weekends. It's not like I have plans. I don't have any friends in the area I live in. Like, there's not really anything I'd be doing anyway, so. Might as well catch up on my sleep. Let's see, so 2023 Perfect Dark with the two, how much US dollars is considered the 1% in Japan? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, top 1% earnings. Yeah, 
Encom needed to be on your site. So for Japan, why is it not listed? The fuck? I don't know. The US is four hundred and eighty-eight thousand. China's a hundred thousand, so I would think it would be lower than uh the US, but I don't know. That's a good question. I sailed with the 10. It took me almost a month to beat Resident Evil 4 back in the day. It would take two days, no joke. And it's a good thing. Priorities take place eventually, like you said. It just hits you the moment you roll out of it. Yeah, exactly, man. I mean, that's the thing is I'm, like, not even in denial. Like, oh, dude, there's nothing I'd rather be doing right now than what I am doing. Like, no, obviously I'd rather have other shit to do. Like, just keeping it a buck fitty. Like, I think it'd be great if I had, like, a social life and friends and, like, was dating or whatever. But, you know, it is what it is. I don't really care. I ain't really pressed. Once you're alone long enough, you won't want to... S I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. I can hear the pain in your voice, Griff. You do care? Uh, I just said I did. I don't know, man. Yeah, you'll definitely go crazy if you don't socially interact. Humans are very social creatures, man, so... Like, there's a reason why everyone right now is on social media, because in a way, it's a form of social interaction. Why does communication over the internet usually not count as valid social interaction to many people? Because you're not actually talking to someone face to face. You will never have the same connection with someone. 
talking to them virtually versus face to face. That's a scientific fact. You do not truly bond with someone the same way over the internet or the phone or whatever versus if you talk to them face to face in person. That physical contact that you uh, establish with other people, even if it's not like actual physical contact, but like being physically within the same vicinity is something you can't replicate. That's why they say like a handshake is so important because you're like forming that physical connection from the greeting. Like, you know, animals in general are physical creatures. That's how they communicate. So on some level, humans are the exact same way as we read body language just as much as we listen to the way someone's talking. Like, body language is, in a sense, a complete, like, different form of communication than what people are actually saying. And you can't pick up on that when you're not, like, in person with that person. You're, like, literally missing out on one of the most important parts of social interaction, which is the physical actions that someone is taking while they're speaking to you and communicating. Nonverbal communication is very important. Uh, Lord Pothead Investor with the 10, I got assigned to a new position at my work, and now I work around minors, one who's 16 years old, I think likes me, she talks to me every day I work, she's always looking at me, I'm the only guy she talks to. Uh, I don't know, man. It could just be that you're friendly and everybody else is a prick, so there could be that, I don't know. That could be the other thing, too. This is something to keep in mind, though. Like, women are capable of being friends with guys. Guys are not capable of being friends with chicks. Like, that's just the thing. No guy wants to be friends with a girl that he doesn't actually want to, you know, bang. You know what I mean? Like, behind every female friend, there's, like, actually some desire that a guy has. Like, yeah, I'd probably fuck her. <laughs> but it doesn't work that way with women. Women can genuinely be your friend. So I wouldn't look too much into it, man. I mean, unless she's like making fucking moves and shit like that, then yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. She's probably just being nice and probably thinks you're nice and wants to interact with you because you're nice to her, you know? I saw that with the five. That is true. It's why I drop. Wait, why drop the N bomb with the hard R and COD versus in real life? Lol, no one will say it to you in person. Yeah, exactly. Because there's like a certain expectation when you're interacting with someone face to face, you know? Over the internet, it's just like some anonymous dipshit that you don't know anything about, so you don't give a fuck. But when you actually see another person in front of you, you know, it's a different interaction entirely. Scotty man with the five, that's why dogs are the best. They are very communicative and interactive animals that get along with humans. The best in my opinion, at least you have Apollo. That's right, man. Apollo is a legend. At least now that he's no longer shitting on the floor all the fucking time, but yeah. I can't stand talking to women. I don't know how guys can stand, stay friends with women. Well, dude, that's because I literally just said, on some level, that guy wants to bang that chick. So he's like romantically attracted to her. So he just wants to be around her. 
That's the thing. It's like, if you find a chick attractive, you're going to sit there and just want to be around her because, you know, you're attracted to her. You enjoy looking at her and stuff like that. But eventually it wears off, but, you know. I don't know. I don't really see an issue with that. Like, I've talked to a lot of, like, women over the years that are very interesting to talk to. So not everybody's fucking annoying. It just depends on the person. Like, if it's your basic Starbucks hoe, then yeah, they're probably fucking obnoxious, but not everybody's like that. Elijah Petty with the two, solitude is more unhealthy than sm- Yup. That it is. It takes years off your life. Also not sleeping does too, so I'm pretty much fucked. Die at 27? Probably. Fluffle nugget with the two, at least with smoking, you can be sociable. Yeah, pretty much, man. I mean, smoking cigars and shit's definitely, like, a social thing. Like, go to a cigar lounge or some shit. But, yeah, I don't know, man. I think it's funny, like, a lot of people confuse, like, social media and online interactions as socializing, when in reality, they're causing people to be less and less social in general, despite having more access to more people than ever before. Yeah, if you base your entire existence on social media, that is not a healthy state to be in. You need actual, like, real shit going on in your life. Living on the internet is a terrible fucking idea. Just look at DSP, man. King Samuel with the two explains so much about Twitter people and ins Yup. It's like a coping mechanism. Like, instead of, you know, them being forced to go out and, like, want to interact with people in real life, it further isolates them even more because they start to, like, basically get their hit of social interaction through, like, social media and the internet versus, like, genuine face-to-face -face interaction. So... It's like people who become porn addicts, you know? Instead of actually going out and banging bitches, they're over there jerking off all the fucking time because it gives them that same fucking dopamine hit. But it's not the same, and that's why they have to like continuously either, either, get either worse and worse. Subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. Scotty Man with the 25 months. Did you hear Nicki Minaj is getting a skin and God, yeah, that shit's gonna be funny. They're adding Snoop Dogg back too, and 21 Savage, so I think that's pretty neat. I like collabs like that personally. 
And Nicki Minaj is the only female rapper I actually like, so I'll probably pick that shit up, bro. For how long would you say being a shut-in become... I would say being a shut-in in general is very unhealthy. Like I said, guys, do not, do not mirror my fucking lifestyle. I mean, honestly, if I wasn't working remote, I don't think it'd be that bad, but I am working remote, and the job I have does not require me to interact with people, even on the fucking computer, so... Yeah, I'm basically just chilling by myself 24-7 for the most part. Oscar Rodriguez of the Five, I've parked the car to say this. Too many people live like Walter Mitty, stuck in quicksand waiting for Superman to save them. Gotta take a leap. Oh, yeah, you definitely gotta, like, put yourself out there, bro. Like, that's the thing. Is if you just take the easy and comfortable path with everything in life, then you're never gonna fucking do anything. Because it's always easier to do nothing than to do something. So, 100%. You gotta, like, actually, you know, take action. It's like the fat fucks who don't want to lose weight because it's hard. It's like, no shit. Anything worthwhile is hard. Otherwise, it wouldn't be fucking worth doing, and everyone would do it. The only things that are worth doing in life are the hard things. That's why they're fucking hard, because they're rewarding. If they weren't rewarding, then they would be fucking easy. Fluffle Nugget with the two Nicki Minaj's Pink Friday was her best out. Yeah, I agree, man. Taxes aren't hard. Dude, taxes get automatically deducted out of your fucking paycheck. They make taxes easy as fuck. Yeah, it's easier to fucking, you know, <laughs> snort a line of coke than to actually fix your fucking problems. Like, get high, forget about the shit that's going on, or, you know, chug a fucking bottle of alcohol because you're feeling sad versus dealing with the problems. Instead, you wash it down with brown, bro. Or, you know, you're a fat fuck like Amberlynn, who instead of, you know, taking a positive change in her life and fixing her fucking eating problem, instead copes with her eating problem by eating more fucking food, furthering the issue. Like, stop using coping mechanisms and actually change the fucking problem. Solve the problem. Stop, like, fucking finding ways to cope with it. Have I ever voted Democratic? Uh, that's not really anyone's business but my own, man. I don't know. I don't really feel like it's anyone's business who I vote for. Just like it's not my business who you vote for. Vote for whoever you want, man. That's it. Dude, it's not a yes or no. It's no one's fucking business who I vote for. Like, you have your vote, I have mine, and the only one who should have any influence on the way you vote is yourself, and same goes for me. Like, I don't know, man. It's not really anyone's business. I don't really care who you vote for, and you shouldn't really care who I vote for either. No one's going to change my mind, and I would hope that I'm not going to change anyone else's, so. It's the problem is people are too easily influenced.
Scotty man with the two, but Griff weed isn't addictive. I swear. Oh my god, dude. People who say that are like top tier cope artists. I know several people that fucked up their life because they got addicted to weed. Like, to this day, the only thing they fucking post on, like, their fucking Snapchat story is, like, them fucking lighting up a bowl 24-7 or showing off their new bong or, you know, posting videos of them puffing a fat cloud. It's just, like, pitiful, dude. It's, like... These motherfuckers are two years older than me in some cases, like 27 years old, still living with fucking mommy, you know, smoking weed all day, no fucking job, no education, just literal fucking losers. And it's like, and these people were like enrolled in college and everything, but they dropped out because they just like literally were fucking pot addicts pretty much. And they fucking couldn't function. I don't know, man. It's just, it's pretty sad. I mean, I've seen it firsthand, so whenever people say it's not addictive, I'm just like, no, I know for a fact it is. I've seen it with my own fucking eyes. It has touched people I know personally. Dark City, I think you smoke something a little stronger than pot, my guy, but I'm glad that you can, uh, I'm glad that you can moderate. That's the thing, it's fine to smoke, like, it's okay to drink, just don't, like, let it consume your existence, like, lighten up a fucking bowl on the weekend or whatever the fuck to relax and hang out, like, that's fine, who cares? But if you literally need weed to function because you feel like shit unless you're fucking high all the time, then that's an issue. You have a reliance at that point. It's like, I remember one of the guys like that I know that became addicted was like, dude, I'm not addicted to weed. It just, I feel like shit unless I smoke. It's like, bruh. That's like saying I'm not addicted to caffeine, but I get a fucking awful headache if I don't drink two cups of coffee. <laughs> it's like, yes, you are addicted, you dumb fuck. It has an adverse effect on your body if you don't fucking use it. You are addicted at that point. It's like, oh my god. Yeah, alcohol is very addictive. Any, any substance can be addicting, man. Sugar is one of the most addictive substances on planet Earth. Your body will crave sugar for, like, weeks if you cut it out. You will have cravings for sugar that are probably worse than, like, a fucking caffeine headache. It's crazy. Sugar is probably the most addictive, like, substance aside from, like, fucking meth. Sugar is more addictive than heroin. I mean, it doesn't affect your body the same way, but in terms of how quickly you can become addicted to it, sugar is much more severe of an addiction. Not in terms of the adverse effects, but, you know. It's easier to become addicted to sugar than heroin. Yeah, what you need to cut out is refined sugar and, uh, not cane sugar, um, corn syrup. Get rid of high fructose corn syrup and added sugars from what you eat and you will feel better. Oh, yeah, dude, the food industry loves sugar because it makes everything taste better, pretty much. If your food tastes better, people want to buy more of it. So, yeah, the sugar industry is huge. 
You're basically going up against every major food producer on planet Earth. If you tried to like outlaw corn syrup or fucking refined sugars or added sugars or any of that type of shit. People are so addicted to it. Dude, you say that as a joke, but a lot of restaurants do put sugar on, like, vegetables to make them taste better. Because the restaurant doesn't care if you're eating healthy. They just want you to come back. So if you think the food tastes good, they'll put whatever, like, makes that the case. Like, go to a steakhouse, for example. They might melt half a stick of butter on top of your steak to make it taste better. You may think you're ordering a lean cut of beef that's healthy for you. But then they go and melt, like, fucking butter on top of it to give it more flavor. And all of a sudden, it's not even that fucking healthy. So, that's the thing with, like, the food industry. They're in the business of making things taste good, not good for you. Like, dude, literally, my, uh... My school I went to had like these breakfast pizzas and literally what they would do is melt fucking butter on top of the pizza after they pulled it out of the oven to make it taste better. And it's like, bro, what the fuck? I mean, it tasted great, but it's like, dude, once I heard about that, I was like, oh God, what the fuck? It was like, damn, man. So, that's the thing, dude. You gotta be careful. Like, it's almost impossible to eat healthy unless you were consciously tracking that shit. And just eating, like, pure foods. The more processing and prep that goes into preparing a dish, the more likelihood that it's not healthy for you. Like, even salads are unhealthy because they dump fucking dressing on it that has more calories than the entirety of the fucking salad you ordered. Like, you'd be better off getting a fucking bowl of pasta in some cases than eating some salads. It's wild. And most people would probably just rather eat the pasta than a salad anyway. And you could have. If you're going from a pure calorie standpoint, you would have been... a in a better situation calorically if you would have just ordered the fucking pasta. Yeah, dude, I really wish we did have a lot of the restrictions in place that Europe did when it when it comes to food. Like But that's the thing is you have like these fat asses that are so addicted to like large portion sizes, you know, half gallon sodas. You're messing with my freedom to get a 64 ounce soda from McDonald's. Like you have those type of fucking dipshits. That are like, it's my God-given American right to get a double gulp from 7-Eleven that's going to put me in the grave 20 years sooner. It's like sad, dude. It's like, yes, please allow companies to sell me shit that is actively fucking killing me day by day. It's just wild, bro. It is wild. The fast food... 
processed food, soft drink, like industries are literally killing people. No, Europe's food does not taste bland. The fuck? Go to Italy and tell me the food tastes bland. There's no way. I mean, if you go to Britain, then yeah, but every other European country has, like, very distinct and, you know, famous cuisine. You generation with the five react to? Uh-oh. I'm scared to click. Flavel Nugget with a two weed doesn't cure autism and accelerates it. Yeah, no. I mean... Smoking weed before your brain is fully developed kills your intelligence, too. It makes you fucking dumb. It also fucks up your testosterone, too, so, yeah. It's my God-given right to get diabetes by age 30. And if you take that shit away from me, then you're a goddamn terrorist. It's like, no, you fucking retard. The fucking, you know, multi-billion dollar corporation that's selling you death in a cup is the fucking terrorist. guy uh, apologizing because um, I ordered something from him and he has it in like his uh, card vault or whatever so he was like apologizing and shit because like the company that has his card like vaulted has not shipped it out yet after like a week or two now so yeah which it's not his fault like that's the fucking company and I know for a fact because I have shit vaulted with them and they take fucking forever to ship but yeah He's just make like he's trying to like make sure I know that he's not like scamming me or whatever. Cuz I already gave him like 1100 bucks for the card and which is nice like I like I appreciate that he's staying on top of it but it's like it's all good bro. I know I understand. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like he's following up with me. Most people don't do that, so I I actually do appreciate that. There we go. The sad part is they will get a girlfriend who will 
Hopefully everybody in this chat, man. Unless you're gay, then. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe they could change you. I wonder if that's ever a thing, dude. Like, a gay guy just fucks a chick with, like, insane gorilla grip potential and just converts to be <laughs> straight. I wonder if that's ever happened, bro. Like, there's a guy who thinks he's gay until he fucks a chick and he's like, oh, wait, never mind. I wonder if that's ever occurred. I'm not gay no more. I just couldn't get pussy. <laughs> Bruh. curious because I did order some shit from that vault company. I want to see if they've shipped my stuff yet. It's actually a good question. Account details. Oh, right now. Can I check my mm. oh, I guess you can't check it on the app. That's stupid. Yeah, I wonder, like, because I feel like that's actually a thing, man. Like, there's a bunch of probably young guys out there that have no luck getting a girlfriend or whatever, and they watch, like, a bunch of fucking, like, weird anime porn and stuff like that with, like, traps and shit like that. And they, like, convince themselves in a sense that they're actually, like, bisexual or gay just because they've never actually been able to get with a woman. So they just want any sort of, like, sexual contact. But then once they have the opportunity to actually, you know, bang a chick, they're like, oh, wait, never mind. Yeah, no. I feel like there's probably a pretty, especially younger, like, you know, teenage boys and like maybe even like early 20s. I feel like that's probably pretty common in all honesty with a lot of these people who identify as bisexual. I think it's the fact that like they're not sexually active yet and therefore they'll just kind of take whatever they can get. I think that's probably a pretty common occurrence. Oh, did DSP finally get to the uh, sex scene in Final Fantasy VI? Dude, how much? It's been over a month since that game came out and he still hasn't finished it. It's like 20 something hours. What the hell is he doing, bro? Like, how has he not finished that game? That is crazy. No wonder why nobody fucking gives him tips. I silo with the five, start at 46 seconds to the end of the video if you can make it fast or make it last. Yes, it's super copyright movie is so underrated. We will check it out, man. Appreciate it. I'm pretty sure the whole one-fifth of Zoomers are LGBT is just kids wanting attention of guys LARPing as bisexuality because they can I, I honestly really do feel like there is a huge number of people that are just sexually confused and given the opportunity to actually pick between having sex with a guy or a girl, they would pick a girl nine times out of ten. For all the like dudes that claim they're bisexual or whatever, 100%. I mean, let me, let me put it this way. How many bisexual guys do you know 
that get married to like a woman like truly bisexual men that stay married to a woman I don't think there's very many whenever someone comes out as bisexual they almost always end up in a same sex relationship I don't really think bisexuality exists. I think it's more of just being kind of like a whore. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I feel like if you're bisexual, you're actually probably just gay or lesbian. And you're just not very picky with who you fuck. Like, you'll have sex to have sex, but in reality, you're actually, like, homosexual. I think. Relationship-wise. Maybe not sexual attraction-wise, but... If you're a bisexual man, truly you're probably going to end up with another man. Do you get what I mean? I don't know. Like, if you view both genders as a uh, potential life partner, I think most bisexual guys are going to end up with another man. But, hey, it's just me. The whole concept of bisexuality doesn't really sell me, in all honesty. I don't really see it. Because, like, let's just put it this way, guys. If you are sexually attracted to men, a woman is never going to be able to give you that sexual experience if you marry her. You will either end up cheating on her with another guy or you'll end up divorcing her because you are, like, missing something. Like, that's the thing. If, like, the... I, I don't know. Like, it's just... It's such a weird topic to talk about, but... It would basically be like being in a relationship with a chick who lets, like, lets you smash every single night, bro. Like, whatever you want to do, she's down to pound. But then your next relationship, the chick is like, Oh, you know, maybe I'll give you a hand job once a week. Do you think that guy is going to be happy after being in that previous relationship where he could literally basically have sex whenever he wanted to and now this other chick he's dating is like just barely doing the minimum? Like, do you think he's going to stick with her? No, he's going to go and leave her and find someone who can give him what he actually wants in a relationship. So I think the same thing kind of goes for like bisexuality, you know? If you truly, truly, truly are sexually turned on by the idea of having sex with another man and you end up married to a woman, there is always going to be a part of you that longs for sex with another guy. Because no matter what, your wife is never going to be able to give it to you. <laughs> Literally. You know what I mean? It's like once you've already tasted the forbidden fruit, you want more of it. What about, I don't know if pegging would be the same thing, but eh, it is what it is. Maybe. Maybe that would work. I don't know. It's just something I've thought about, because, like, I've never, like, actually known someone who claims to be bisexual end up with, like, a partner of the opposite sex. It's just a, uh, I guess, um, what do you call it? Uh, why can I not think of the word observation, dude? I'm like fucking retarded. Observation that I've made over the years. There you go. Holy fuck, dude. An observation. <laughs> Shit. I know from experience. <laughs> what experience, bro? I think Gundam used to call buy now gay late. Yeah, pretty much, man.
I mean, dude, it's like Chris Chan. He claimed to be trans in order to bang lesbians, so... It happens. Never seen anyone outside of overweight women peg. I've never seen anyone peg in general, and hopefully it stays that way. Lord Pothead Investor with a five. I just created a vault account with PSA. What is the vault address? Is it like a real place I can go? So basically, it's a shipping address that you can ship your cards to and PSA will add those cards to your vault, quote unquote, which just means they'll put it in your account and they will store it securely on the premise. It's basically just your unique shipping address to the facility where your cards will be stored so they know where to like, you know, I guess send the cards to on the uh, back end in their system. So like what I would do if I want to vault a card is I would go on my PSA account, enter the cert number onto the website, and then create a vault submission to which I would print out the form, put it in the box with the cards, ship it to that specific address so that when it arrives at PSA, they'll look at the shipping address and be like, okay, this is for vault number, blah, 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 for, you know, Griffin, whatever. And then when they open up that package, they'll know, okay, this card needs to be assigned to that account with this address associated with it. So it's not like a physical building. It's like basically a storage locker within that building. But yeah, I have a shit ton of cards in the PSA vault. I have like, I think 200 something cards in my PSA vault now. I got an absolute, dude, I, I don't really know if I want to reveal that I own the card that I just bought tonight, but dude, I got an absolute fucking banger earlier. Like a fucking numbered one of one card. It's not like a Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh card or something like that. Like a literal one of one card. There's only one printed of it. And I think it's a very fucking valuable card. I paid very fucking cheap. So I'm gonna get that, send that off to PSA. I'm not even gonna get it graded. I'm just gonna get it authenticated. So it'll say on the label instead of a grade, authentic. And yeah, it's a one of one numbered on the front of the card. No, it's not the fucking Lord of the Rings card. I wish. But I wouldn't keep that. I would sell it. <laughs> if I got that Lord of the Rings card, bro, I would cash in that bounty so fucking fast and get the 2.1 million. Like, are you fucking shitting me? I don't give a fuck about a trading card that's worth 2 million. Not only would I be scared to death of storing that thing, but dude, I'd rather have the money. I don't want to say what my one of one card is because if I ever want to sell it, then you know, Rick rod with the five started watching house of cards for the first time since Spacey left, hoping it's just as good as I remember it. Also Underwood is a bad president. Mm. I thought his uh, policy was pretty based, man. Get rid of fucking social security and give people jobs. I think that's a much better use of money. I could get behind that. 
His bitch wife is fucking horrible, though. God, I fucking hate her. I just remember gas prices skyrocketed. That's why I thought, well, that's because of like the war with Russia or whatever in the Middle East that they're engaged in. So yeah, but I guess so. Yeah, makes sense. I saw it with the five. That video is why like DC movies, it's dark, people die. So it's a spoiler. If anyone here doesn't know for spoiler reasons, uh, it's okay. If it's a movie that's been out for a while, I'm not worried about spoilers. I'm not really worried about spoilers in general, because... I don't know. It's almost impossible to not get spoiled in today's world. Which pack art was it? Or Beetle. Or Beetle is what I have always seen people pull a fat gay Pikachu out of, and I pulled a fat gay Pikachu out of an Or Beetle pack art. So, I believe it is true. It's been corroborated on my end. And I opened, like, probably 10 boxes of Vivid Voltage. Like, booster boxes and never got a fat gay Pikachu. I saw it with the two, it's the Flash. Oh, that's okay. No worries. I don't know. I think most people have seen that if they wanted to. Bro, if it was spoilers for the Barbie movie, though, we wouldn't be able to... No, I'm just kidding. I don't give a fuck. What do I think of Margot Robbie? Not my type. I get the appeal, but she's not really my type, man. I like chicks with like softer facial like features than she has. I don't know the best way to put it, but yeah, not really my type. Did I watch the Barbie movie? I mean, I kind of watched it indirectly through Synthetic Man's video, but no. It lo sounds like it's fucking funny, man. Who is your type? Um, I mean, I don't, I don't fucking know, like off the top of my head. Like, I mean, there's been chicks that people have asked me to pull up before, and I've been like, yeah, she's pretty hot. Or there's been plenty that I've been like, nah, not for me. I mean, I don't really have, like, a name to be like, this actress is literally the prime example of what I would blast my seed into every single night if given the opportunity. So, if that's kind of what you're asking for, I don't know. Dude, I agree. Women and, like, average-looking girls, quote-unquote, are so much more attractive than most Hollywood celebrities. 100%. And it's not even close, dude. They look real, that's why. 
like most Hollywood celebrities are so photoshopped, plastic surgery, caked in makeup. You know, it's like they don't even look like real people half the time. Like, there's almost something about the lack of perfection when it comes to how someone looks that makes them more attractive. Like, a chick that doesn't have, like, fully done makeup, maybe has her hair a little bit messy, isn't, like, super fucking, like, perfectly dressed and shit, to me is, like, way more attractive than, like, a quote-unquote model. I don't know, man. Trust issues? Eh, not really. Griffin's dream girl is Elena Pierce because she games. That's right, bro. Just because she plays video games and has a figurine collection, she's literally a 10 out of 10, bro. I find what attractive? What the fuck is that link? Oh, Arnold? Hell yeah, man. Arnold's a baddie. Shit, I'm not clicked in the game. Oops. Dude, I don't know. There's like... Most models are like so fucking skinny that they're just kind of like gross to me. Like, I'm not really saying, like, I like chubby girls, but I don't like fucking bone-thin bitches, if that makes sense. Like, I don't want to fuck a skeleton. That's not attractive to me. Like, I think girls with, like, softer, like, features is better. Like, I don't want to see a fucking skeletal frame when I look at a chick, personally. Like, I don't want to see her bone structure, <laughs> I guess is a good way to put it. Yeah, I don't want to look at a fucking anatomical model of a fucking skeleton with skin when it comes to a uh, girl. Athletic chicks? Yeah. That's a dub. I don't know, bro. I'm gonna be honest. Like, Zendaya is nothing special to me. Like she looks all right, but I don't I don't get the hype, honestly. I've seen dozens of chicks that look way better than Zendaya. Easily. I'm 
I'm not like saying she's ugly, but it's like I don't the, the hype I don't understand. People are like, oh my god, bro, she's literally the hottest chick on planet. Like, no. Not even close. I mean, is she attractive? Yeah, but it's like it's not like this fucking like god tier beauty standard where you're like, holy shit, none compare to her. It's like, no, there's lots of chicks that look better than her. Like, people who think Ice Spice is attractive, it's like, bruh. Oh my god. No. No, dude. She's creepy looking. She looks like a fucking alien, dude. She looks like fucking E.T. in that one fucking short that's always on YouTube. It's like nasty, bruh. I don't know. Because the thing is that's interesting, if you ever look at a picture of uh, Ice Spice before she like got the stupid orange hair and shit like that, she actually looks a way fucking better with like her normal hair. But now she just kind of looks like a fucking clown. Or not kind of, does look like a fucking clown. Well, that's the thing, dude. Any chick that's skinny is technically in, like, the top 30% of women because most women are overweight, in the U.S. at least. So, any chick that's, like, in shape and is not overweight is immediately going to be more beautiful than the majority of chicks. So... That's just the statistics. Well, the same goes for men, bro. Most men are overweight too, so... It's not a gender-specific problem. Most people in the U.S. are overweight. And then they wonder why uh, Instagram model-level chicks don't want to bag them. It's like, bruh. It's because you got a fucking, you know, spare tire up front or whatever. Like, let's see. Body positivity? Uh, yeah. Be positive about your body and lose weight, because you want to help it out. Let's see. U.S. Uh, percentage of population that is overweight. So yeah, an estimate that 42% of Americans have obesity while 30% are overweight, meaning that 73% total are overweight or have obesity. pretty wild man almost three-fourths of the fucking country is overweight so just think about that any chick that is like not overweight is immediately basically in the top one-fourth so pretty crazy dude
Yeah, I'm no longer overweight, so I'm part of like the 25%, so let's fucking go, dude. But, yeah, it's pretty crazy, man. A lot of people are delusional, though, like, for real. Like, if you're complaining about not being in a relationship or no girl being interested in you and you don't take care of yourself physically, you have no one to blame but yourself. Like, if you're not putting in the bare fucking minimum to take care of yourself physically, why the fuck would anyone be attracted to you? And, like, if you're super fucking scrawny, like, hit the fucking gym, man. I don't know. Like, everybody can work on themselves. It's not always just the other person's fault for not finding you attractive. There's work that everybody can do to better themselves. Like, you gotta take some responsibility as well. I saw there with the 10. Nope, that's subjective. I've had a lot of women liking my tattoos and still don't get it. Huh? What do you mean? And I still don't get it. It was never my intention. It's 50% that anime demon slayer tattoos and they love it what do you mean man we were talking about obesity not tattoos i think actually the majority of chicks actually like tattoos funnily enough so i think most women don't like either are impartial or like guys that have tattoos I'll tell you why they like it, because it's a sign of commitment. It's something permanent. It's like, oh, this guy's committed to something. AKA, that's going to translate to you being committed to them. It is kind of sad if you think about it. <laughs> Bruh. But that's, I don't know, dude. The whole, like, idea of dating just to date is really weird to me. I don't understand the point of, like, dating someone that you don't actually want to be with. You're just, like, you know, stringing them along or whatever for whatever reasons. And you have no actual intentions past, like, just hanging out with them every once in a while. It's just kind of, like, a waste of time. But, you know, a lot of guys engage in that behavior, so a lot of chicks are wary of that type of behavior. So anything that, like, indicates commitment, loyalty, things like that is attractive to them because it means, oh, you're more likely to be committed to me. It's like if you have a pet. That's a massive green flag for chicks. Like, oh, he cares for something other than himself. I saw it with the five. Is it a bad boy kind of status? Like, yeah, kind of like that, but it's also a commitment thing too. Cause it's like you have committed to permanently marking your body with a tattoo, which, you know, in <laughs> the monkey brain might translate to, oh, he committed to this. He's capable of committing to me. So yeah, there is kind of like the bad boy kind of thing, but I think it's also the commitment aspect. Am I a bad boy? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not. Dude, I'm like some preppy little white boy. But no, I'm, I'm not a bad boy. I'm a good boy. I don't drink, I don't cuss, I don't do drugs. I show up to work every morning, and I read my Bible every single night. 
No, I'm I'm not what you consider to be a bad boy, bro. Hell yeah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah, I'm walking around in my 20s with a fucking leather jacket. Dude, fuck. That reminds me. Who was... We watched, like, some cringe video once of, like, this, like, 40 or 50-year-old man giving advice for, like, 20-year-old dudes to dress, and it was, like, this guy wearing a fucking leather jacket saying, like, yeah, this shit gives off the bad boy vibes, and it's like... Bruh. <laughs> Dude, I have never seen someone in their 20s wearing a leather jacket that has given off the bad boy vibe. Like, that just sounds so fucking cringe. Like, leather jackets are something you wear when you're, like, 30-plus, I feel like. I have never seen someone I would consider to be, like, cool or, I guess, stylish in their 20s wearing a leather jacket. I feel like that's more of, like, you know, a thing once you're kind of older. Then you can start to pull it off more. Because it's definitely something that screams, I'm old. Or at least more mature, I guess. Not like, you know. Yeah, I'm still in my 20s. I ain't an old man. Uh, I sell it with the five. If it's okay, I have updated tattoos. My IG, I can send. I'm not. Yeah, link it real quick. I can pull them up if you want. If you want to, you know, plug the tats, that's fine. We can pull them up. I mean, bro, he's spending good money on those tattoos, so he wants to show them off. Like, tattoos ain't cheap. That is an expensive fucking, uh, you know, indulgence. Especially if you get, like, a uh, really popular tattoo artist to do it. It can be, like, tens of thousands of dollars a session. Well, I mean, it's like paying for a piece of art, basically, you know? Why is art so expensive? It's just paint on canvas. Well, it's whoever does it, you know? Like, you're basically paying for someone to draw or paint on your skin. So if a famous or well-known tattoo artist is working on you, you're going to have to pay more for that. Also, it gives you, like, some assurance that, you know, you're not getting, like, some fucking rookie who's gonna fuck up majorly if you go to someone with a good reputation, so. It's not really something you can, uh, be like, oh, oops, let's hit the undo button and fix that real quick. Oski Waski with the two. My cousin spent about three or wait, two, 100 shit on three tattoos. I'm guessing they were small, man. Either that or you got a really good deal because like tattoos in the US I know are fucking super expensive. Like one of my friends in high school when he turned 18 went and got a fucking uh, tattoo on his bicep and it was like two grand, but it was like really fucking detailed. It was like a fucking bald eagle in front of like an American flag with like multicolors, super detailed. Like, the actual art was really nice. I wouldn't have gotten the tattoo, but... Yeah, he paid, like, three grand for it. It was expensive.
Like, if you want good work done, it's not cheap. Oski Oski, the two, two were small, one was big, the guy was good with it. Nice, man. I'm sure, like, down in Mexico, too, it's probably a lot more affordable. But, still, that seems pretty cheap. 100 bucks for three tattoos. Ah, shit. <laughs> Why the fuck would I get a tramp stamp, man? Daryl's in with the two. No, Violet Myers. Let's watch Mia Khalifa. Ew. Dude, honestly, Violet Myers is more attractive than fucking Mia Khalifa. Mia Khalifa is the most disgusting porn star I think I have ever seen. That is, like, super mainstream. Like, I saw one video of her, and, like, her fake tits are so fucking big that, like, you can literally see where her fucking areolas look like they're about to fucking rip, man. It, it, ugh, dude, she's so gross. Nasty. Like, absolutely fucking nasty. Mia Khalifa is disgusting, dude. Absolutely fucking gross. Like, the skin on her tits is so fucking stretched out from those oversized implants, it is nasty. So, Violet at least has natural tits in that regard, so automatically she's better than Mia Khalifa. How do you know they're fake? Well, considering that she was at a hockey game and got hit in the tit with a puck. I was at this game, by the way. Um, literally a fucking hockey puck flew over the fucking um, glass or whatever and hit her in the titty and it popped her implant and she had to leave. She goes to DC sporting events, by the way. I've seen her in person. She is ugly as fuck. But yeah, she got hit in the titty and it popped her implant. You can look it up, too. It's like an actual thing. It was covered in the news. Yeah, dude. Literally, if you, like, go to the fucking uh, Washington Capitals game in D.C., the hockey team, she goes to those games, and I was walking around the fucking arena during, like, the um, break in between the periods, and she walked, like, right past me. Why the fuck would I want to get a picture with a whore? That's like going to a fucking strip club and being like, Oh my god, can I get your autograph? Yeah, she's very short. No, dude. I made her look tall. <laughs> I'm shorter. No, I'm just kidding. She made me look tall, but nah. I mean, she's a chick, so it doesn't matter how tall she is.
how tall am I? The question is, how short am I? I'm 5'11", man. Basically a manlet. I have a female friend that's five foot tall, lol. That's called fun size, bro. I saw her the five. Uh, rent a dog, 17, that's my IG, the social media. Yeah, hold on, give me a second. It should pull up. I don't know why it doesn't autofill. We've pulled you up before. All right, let's see. There you are. Oh, Nia Chang. Oh, I see your uh, Naruto one. That one actually doesn't look bad. That turned out pretty well. Are you gonna get the uh, clouds colored red? Or are you gonna leave it like that? Yeah, dude, if she ain't seven foot, then I want nothing to do with her. I'm trying to get D1 kids, man. I want basketball player sons making 50 million a year in the NBA. Otherwise, that bitch can fuck off. Well, your kid's height is mostly determined by the mother, funnily enough. The father's height doesn't really play a huge role into the height of the children, which is kind of interesting. It's more so the mother's side of the family. I'm 5'11", man. I'm basically like one inch away from greatness. It's fucking sad. I was so close, man. I guess I could put six feet on my dating profiles and just put in parentheses with shoes. <laughs> I silent with the five, the birth and death rate. That means a lot to me, lol. Yeah, I mean, that's basically the lifeblood of a country, you know? 
If your death rate's higher than birth rate, you're fucked. What do you guys think? Should I make a dating profile and just be like, yeah, what's up? I got six figures, six inches, but not six feet. Bruh. I wouldn't actually go on a date with a chick from a dating app, man. <laughs> I ain't that bold. Not in current year, bro. That is a disaster waiting to happen. trying to do all that. Yep, I'm going to find my soulmate on Call of Duty with voice chat disabled. I saw it with the two, now it's actually... Wait, what do you mean? Oh, birth and death date. Oh, I thought you said meant rate. I was like, oh, okay. No, that makes a lot more fucking sense. Yeah, I can understand that, dude. 100%. I thought you meant birth and death rate. So I was like kind of confused, but yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. I can understand that for sure. You will never find a good girl on a dating app. Well, dude, I'm sure lots of girls say that they'll never find a good guy on a dating app, but I'm on dating apps. So obviously that's not true. So maybe there are good girls on dating apps. Bruh. Peak Redditor energy. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I just, like, the whole... The other thing is, too, is I don't want to have to message people. I hate fucking texting. I hate texting. With a fucking passion, I hate texting. There is nothing fun about sitting there fucking typing. Like, with a fucking passion, I hate texting. So, dating apps, that's what you have to do. And it's like, bruh, fuck that. I don't know, dude. Like, I'd rather be able to just, like, fucking talk into my phone while I'm doing something else because I don't want to sit there and dedicate my entire attention span to fucking typing for hours. Like, nothing pisses me off more than people who don't fucking end a texting conversation. You know what I mean? Like you're texting somebody and like, all right, cool, man. Sounds good. And then they come back at you with more shit and you're like, bro, fuck off. I don't care. I don't want to keep texting you. Like, fuck off. That's really what you wanted to say is like, dude, quit fucking texting me.
So yeah, the idea of like sitting there on my phone messaging a bunch of random bitches from a dating app just sounds horrific. <laughs> I could literally think of anything I'd rather do than that shit, man. I'd rather work in a fucking Excel spreadsheet than fucking text. Yeah, it's like they gotta get the last word in, dude. I don't understand it. Shit pisses me off. But yeah, personally, I cannot stand texting. I mean, it's also the fact, too, that whenever I get a notification on my phone, it actually pisses me off. Like, I fucking hate having to, like, go through a bunch of notifications. Absolutely fucking hate it. Like, whenever I look at my phone and I see, like, unread notifications or some shit, it, like, really makes me angry. I'm like, oh, fuck. I don't want to have to go through these. <laughs> oh, dude, it's irrit. I don't know. I don't like messaging people. And I don't like texting. I would much rather just get in fucking, like you know, phone call or FaceTime or whatever the fuck and like just talk and not have to like fucking type shit out. I don't know. Like when I wake up in the morning and I have like a hundred notifications on my phone, I'm like, bro, fuck this. I just clear all. So if somebody sent me something important when I wake up, it's like, bruh, that shit gone. <laughs> You'll have to, like, bump it <laughs> for me to pay attention to it. That's weird. You're an introvert. Why is that weird? Why is it weird that I'm an introvert? I don't get that. What's wrong with being, uh, or enjoying being alone? Or I guess not really enjoying being alone. It's more so you can function well by yourself. Oski Woski with the two. Yo, big house, man. Gaming. I thought you were ultra alpha male Chad. I know, man. I thought so too, but I guess I'm not. I'm not the actual fucking alpha gamer Giga Chad. Unfortunate. Nothing, I'm just saying since you like talking. Well, dude, I just don't like texting. It's just way easier to talk. If anything, it minimizes the amount of time you have to spend socialize. <laughs> so I guess it is kind of an introvert thing, you know? It's like you'd rather not spend fucking eight years texting someone. You'd rather just call, get it the fuck over with, and move on with your day. So, I don't know. I think you could twist it both ways, right? You like texting? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I strongly dislike it. Like, I'm cool to send, like, a couple messages back and forth. Like, that's not a problem. But, like, when people don't know how to end a conversation and feel like they constantly need to, like, keep it drawing on and on and on and on and on, that's when I get pissed. Like, if somebody texts me, like, three to four times and then that's it, cool. You know? That's fine. Not everything warrants a fucking call or whatever. Like, if it's a quick question or, like, checking in or whatever, like, you know, that's fine.
but if you're sending like 85 fucking messages, like just drawing on a conversation for hours, it's like, dude, no, that's way too much. Scotty Man with a five, did you hear about Final Fantasy Online is coming to Xbox? Maybe this is a sign future Final Fantasy projects will come to Xbox as well. I think it just depends on if Sony is going to buy exclusivity or not. I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, I saw that with a five, you think the red cloud is good for the Nagato tattoo? Uh, I would, if, well, isn't that pain? So that's not, uh. That's not Nagato, bro. Technically, that's Yahiko. But, uh, hold on, let me adjust my glasses real quick. They just slipped off my nose. Um, anyway. Yeah, I would do that. I think the red and the black would contrast pretty well. drank like a fucking gallon of water today, man. Shit's irritating. I gotta keep drinking. Up, I'm gonna chug some water right now. Bottoms up, bitches. <clears throat> How many ounces was that? Let's see. That was 18 ounces. Gaming. Yeah! Will, if you can't send super chats, uh, try it on your computer or web browser. Congratulations, you are not chronically online. And oh, we got iSiler's uh, chick here. Um, I'm gonna adjust speed. And I also want to apologize in advance for having to expose you to her, especially when you see some of the creepy, messed up things that she has said. But uh, just to give a TLDR for those who don't know who she is, she is a panderer and a LARPer in the manosphere. She targets lonely men and uses and manipulates them for the grift. Okay, and she yeah, that's actually kind of based, honestly. Taking uh, advantage of vulnerable individuals on the internet that are a bunch of losers, I think is fine. They do it to themselves. If you don't if you don't take money from a bunch of dorks on the internet, someone else will. So, you know what? Get that bag. She does not follow any of the <laughs> like honestly any of the criticisms that she has against other women. Let's be real. There's plenty. A fool is always separated from their money, so you might as well be the one who takes it, right? That's the way I view it, at least. So, can't really hate. I saw with the five the Nezoku tattoo from Demon Slayer that's on my left shoulder that has to be fire. She's brutal, a bad bitch. Nice man. I'm not sure who Nezoku is, but or Nezuko. How do you spell it? Yeah, Nezuko. There we go. 
Griffin, we know you have a crush on Melanie here. Don't act like you don't. I do not. <laughs> I can 100% assure you. Dude, I'm I'm debating um I'm debating speak well Zuko, which is from like fucking Avatar the Last Airbender. Like I'm actually like thinking about buying um some of those Avatar like trading card booster boxes to open up for the shits and giggles. I feel like that'd be kind of fun. Any of criticisms that we can have with society, uh, with both genders and with women, and specifically with feminism, it has plagued society and it has caused problems for women. And in the same way, the manosphere is just like feminism, and it's hurting men more than it's hurting women. Uh, okay, it's all it's all a guise, it's all a psyop, just like feminism is, right? But uh, anyway, let me just dive into the video because you guys are in for a wild ride. I ratioed this woman. And I'm not, I don't like to come after people, but in this case, when it comes to these sickos, I will. So anyway, first I made this tweet because what's trending online right now with these gender wars is to tell women that after 40, they're worthless, essentially. You're constantly seeing that. You're constantly seeing people on Twitter say, oh, who's hotter? Was she hotter when she was What 20? does it say? Despite what anyone says on Twitter, wait, oh, never mind. I thought it was what five or when she was forty. Oh, and it was like, who freaking cares? At the end of the day, who freaking cares? Why are we feeding into this gender war? First of all, um, but because of that, and I wanted to I make, wanted to see where people were saying they expire over forty because it's kind of funny. This tweet because I've seen a lot of women who have been hurting and sad because they've seen this stuff. It hurts their feelings. At the end of the day, it's going to hurt men in society more than anything. But still, it had hurt their feelings seeing this thing. There was one girl who was twenty-seven years old and was saving herself for marriage a christian girl who's never been with a man <laughs> it's tyler with the five there's no way you can deny this tattooed woman isn't cute no way dude i i 100 can but that's the wonderful thing about preference you know what i dislike you are more than capable of liking and we're not in competition with each other at all you know like it's free real estate for you my guy I will not be competing in that auction. Man before. And she she's looking for her future husband and she just hasn't found him yet. And so seeing the, this narrative of, oh, she's about to expire because she's past the age of 25, it, it just makes her, things feel bleak for her that, oh my gosh, like I'm worthless and I, uh, I, I'm worthless now and I ain't even ran through, I ain't even this, that, or the other, like these gurus are claiming. And she, she possesses all of the qualities that these gurus say men want and yet here she is still having a hard time, which shows that society at large is there's a big issue with that but, but instead of diving too much into that and i don't even want to spend too much time into this because there's a much bigger topic at hand and that's with the disgusting perversion okay and i'll show that in a minute but first i just wanted to show an example of hey you know can we just stop the gender wars and can we stop the transactional like men are only valuable if they are rich and women are only valuable if they're young can we stop this narrative and start uniting people more again stop this gender wars and start saying hey maybe people should i don't know here's a novel concept try to look for a life mate for love purposes right and here i just i posted like this um this little inspiring type quote uh, earlier in the day about uh putting others above ourselves and how that brings us more joy than being selfish ever could and after i did that this older gentleman said if i could find a 60 year old version of you i'd have a ring on her finger yesterday and i just thought hey you know what this is a good example to use about this gender war stuff going on right now that when they say nobody's going to want a woman after she's 40 it's not true there's other men who are 40 or 50 or whatever who is some even younger who might want her because they might fall in love with her and care about her as a human being you know and that was the point i was making is don't let anybody and i even sp specified here regardless of your gender don't let gurus place value on you not on your looks not on money not on status or anything like that your value should come from the lord and um th these gurus are profiting on making people feel insecure and they're con artists there's gurus who appease to men and women alike and are her what i <sighs> pearly things is like the chick that's like kind of ugly right i wouldn't really call her a guru <laughs> like isn't she fucking like 30 and single or some shit like i don't know i don't know why anyone would take advice from her hurting them in this process so i mean i wanted to stress this because 
you know, uh, you, uh, whatever stage you are, uh, you're at in your life, no matter what mistakes, and again, regardless of gender, anybody who's watching this, I want you to see this and know that wherever you're at in your life right now, whatever mistakes you've made, whatever age you are, whatever job status you don't have, whatever money you don't have, don't let that make you feel worthless. Put your, put, like, seek Jesus, okay? Seek Jesus. You, God made you for a reason, and you are special for that reason. And it's not too late to just do the best with what you've got and to turn your life around, give your life. Uh, so that's, she should be stressing that a little bit more. Like, yeah, let's say that you want to go the route of saying, yeah, God made you for a reason. Well, God didn't make you to fucking sit on your ass all day, eating hot Cheetos, drinking fucking Bud Light, playing video games all day into your mid fifties. So yeah. You are special as your own individual person, but you still need to fucking do something with yourself. It's still your fucking job to make something of yourself. You're not a special little snowflake just because God put you on this earth. You know, you actually have to fucking be a worthwhile human being. And that's on you life to Jesus and live the life that he has planned for you. That was the point that I wanted to stress with this. So I made this tweet. Pearl, of course, has to quote tweet it. She goes, delusion. No one says no one will want her, but it's significantly significantly harder to find a relationship as at 40 as a woman. She says, um, there's a lot of issues with this, but first of all, um, they do. She do, has implied this, that no one will want her. People in this Delusion. Year, no one. Wait, no one says no one will want her, but it's significantly harder to find a relationship as 40 as a woman. Yeah, duh. Of course. There have implied that women over 40 are worthless. Uh, just like people in the female sphere, the gold diggers imply that men are worthless if they're not rich. Okay? So there's an issue to be had here. Well, they are technically worth less than someone who is rich, right? <laughs> You're poor! You're fucking poor! <laughs> but yeah. Um, so first of all, she is twisting the narrative. Uh, but secondly, dude, let's be real. It's harder for everyone to find a relationship at 40 versus 20 because a lot of the 20 year olds, they date each other, they marry each other and, and you know, they're, uh, oh, by the Yeah, but it's way harder for a 40 year old woman to find a relationship than a wealthy 40. So let, let's do it this way. It is much harder for a wealthy 40 year old woman to find a younger guy to date versus a 40 year old man finding a younger girl to date at that point in life, all things equal aside from gender, it is easier for dudes to get into a relationship than it is for women past the age of 40. I think that's true time you reach 40 in a lot of cases you're encountering a lot of people who have been divorced or um, for whatever reason in their life haven't um, found a relationship that could be to due to baggage or not and a lot of us who are older for me I'm 36 years old there's some baggage associated with me I'm divorced so hey that's life uh, what's the what is the point in doing this what is the point in trying to hurt people what is the point in that um, and in her case I don't really see that as hurting someone that's just a factual statement dude I don't know she is trying to pander to men to loan. I think it's just because she's in that age group. So, you know, it kind of hits close to home. You know what I mean? Men and in the process, she's going to hurt them because statistically speaking, it's men who are suffering more than women. OK, 28% um, of 40 year old men have never been married versus 22% of women the same age. Yeah, but would you argue that? So this is the thing. If 28% of men have never married, that means that more women are divorced than men are. So would you argue that getting into a relationship that ends with divorce is better off than someone who never married at all? Like, I don't know. I feel like that statistic could be twisted in either direction, right? Like, I wouldn't really necessarily say that women who are divorced are better off in life than men who never married, you know? <laughs> like, if anything, the women made the mistake in that regard. Not the guys. So, I don't know, dude. That statistic, I feel like you could take in either direction. 
I saw her with the two. Look at her left sleeve. <laughs> Bro. Dog, I think you want to make her your sleeve, if you know what I mean. Uh, Will with the two. Watch me, Mology 101 video. Yeah, we can check it out, man. And King Samuel with the two. Incels and feminists are two sides. Oh, 100%, bro. It's like fucking right and left wing grifters. They're all the fucking same. Or SJWs and anti-SJWs. They need each other. It's like a fucking symbiotic relationship. Okay, men are hurting the most from these gurus. So anyway, I quote tweeted her because she actually said this recently. I said silence, pedo. She says, I, I don't even want to repeat this. You guys can read it yourself. It's just disgusting. It's disgusting. And these are the type of people she is pandering to. And it really comes as no surprise when you obsess over a woman's... Yeah, she should have just said 18 and then it wouldn't have been an issue. But, yeah. That is kind of an L. Like, she should have bumped it to 18 and then nobody would have had a problem with it. But, yeah, that's not pedophilia. <laughs> Like, most of the developed world, 16 is completely fucking legal. So, no, that's not pedophilia. Sorry. I mean, if she bumped this up to 18 in the tweet, nobody would have given a fuck. It's just the fucking sticker shock of 16. But, yeah. Youth and putting her entire value over her youth, then, yeah, you're going to appeal to a bunch of perverts. You're going to appeal to a bunch of pedos, quite frankly. And... That seems well. No, it's like I'm pretty sure, statistically speaking, women achieve like their, I guess, peak beauty at 21 and 22, and then it's kind of like a downward slope from there. I think that's actually true. Let me see. What age are women considered the most beautiful? I'm pretty sure it is 22. Um, oh, yeah, I'm getting a wide fucking range. This site's trying to claim 34. Hell no, dude. Not a fucking chance. Are they really going to argue that a college-aged girl is less attractive than a fucking 34-year-old? Hell nah. Bruh. No. College-aged chicks are like peak beauty, I feel like. Most people would agree with that. I mean, they may be fucking dumb as shit or annoying to be around, but in terms of like just straight beauty, I would say like most chicks college age that is like the peak on average but yeah 21 22 is what i would say and then i mean some it can get extended or it can be i don't fucking know it's a range bro it's like the autism spectrum there's lots of values all over the fucking board but i would say average like college age chicks up to maybe like age 24, 25, that's like the peak, I would say. And then I think it's downhill after that. It's to be exactly the case with her, with what she's saying here. And she has said uh, other things as well. Now this, I believe, I don't know what this is completely in reference to. I think maybe Mohammed because she talks about Islam some, but I might be wrong there. Yeah, that Christian. is Islam. In Islam, but that's just what I what I thought it was about. She says, others are saying it's okay. He, I don't even like reading this. Um, I'm not even going to read it. You read it. You read it. Others are saying it's okay. He screwed a nine-year-old because it was a different time. Okay. I could get maybe 13 or 12, but nine. I don't even want to read it. What's wrong with that tweet? Read it. I feel sick to my stomach. Even looking at it. Perversion. Disgusting. Okay. How is that tweet discuss like if anything you should be agreeing with her if you think that's a disgusting concept. <laughs> like what? What's wrong with this tweet? I, I don't get it. Daryl's on with the two. Yes, 34 or hotter. Get oh my god. Get fucking wrecked. You're right, man. Women are definitely beautiful at all ages, especially in the retirement home. 
I saw her with the five. Melanie is hyper from what I've seen, and she's my age, a little older. She's hyper in the, the go for it, man. You know? <laughs> Shoot your shot, my guy. What's that saying? You miss all the shots that you never take. So what's the worst that can happen? You stay 0 for 1 anyway. There's no excuse for any of this, what she said. How can you... I could get... <laughs> How? How? Because back in fucking what? What year was Islam established? Like 1200 or some shit? 800? Yeah, back then you got married when you were 13. That was common. <laughs> like, yes. When it was like fucking 800 AD, you were married by 13 because you only had like 20 years to live. <laughs> After that point to like raise a family, the average human life expectancy was like 30 something. So yeah, you started early back then. 7, 11. Ha ha ha. Let's see. What year was Islam created? Or I guess prophet. I'll just look up prophet Muhammad. Uh, so died in 632. There you go. 632, dude. So 680, the average life expectancy was maybe like 30 to 40. So yeah, you got married when you were 13. You were considered to be an adult back then. And you had as many kids as possible because over half of them would die. And you would only have like 15 to 20 years at that point to build a family. So yeah, it was a way fucking different time. But what she's saying here is even considering the time period that this took place, nine is fucking creepy. This tweet, there's nothing wrong with this fucking tweet. Sorry, like, if you're looking for a reason to be, like, fucking angry, like, oh my god, she's encouraging 12-year-olds to have sex. No, dipshit. It's because back then, ele or not 11, fuck, not EDP, bro. Uh, 12 or 13 was normal. I saw 9 and thought 11, bro. <laughs> That's where my fucking brain went. I saw the number 9 and immediately 11 came out of my mouth. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but back then, 12 and 13, that was marriage age. That's when you would start a family. That was normal. Disgusting. That's like why in the Jewish faith, you know, you have your bar mitzvah when you're 13 because it's like your passage into manhood. You were considered to be a man at age 13. You would be married and start a fucking family, living on your own. Gonzo with the 10, I think religion can offer a lot of value to people, but when they become nuts like this lady, it's... Well, this isn't religious, dude, because, like, in the Bible, there's plenty of fucking 13-year-olds that get married. Like, that's the thing, is, like, if she's taking the biblical stance on this type of stuff, this would be A-OK -okay by biblical times. Like, in the Jewish faith, 13 is when you are considered to be an adult. Like, Jesus... Yeah, dude. Exactly, Nick. Jesus' mother was, like, 13. <laughs> because that's when you were considered to be an adult back then. Because your life expectancy was like 30 fucking years. Your life was pretty much halfway over. So, all they do is push their own faith and become outrage merchants like the modern. Eh, I, I agree. I, I think most people that are super preachy about religion typically fall into that category. But, yeah, I don't know, dude. And this is what, and, and people want to downplay this stuff and make excuses for this stuff. But what we have to really point out here is that these pedos and these perverts are blurring the lines. They are trying to blur the, blur the lines and change definitions, as I've said here, because look at what this guy said. Again, I will not even read it. I will show it on screen and you can read it. This guy just out in the open, unabashed, says this. Dis <laughs> to think that Jesus' mom doesn't even look through. I know, bro. I swore she was 23, man. I promise. Disgusting. She Dis lied about her age. Disgusting perverts <laughs> that are just running rampant, not even afraid. And these these gurus are emboldening them. They are giving them confidence. 
to say these disgusting things. I said, there are more perverts and pedos out there than we realize, and they are becoming more emboldened by the minute. They want to change terms. They want to blur the lines. But we can't let that happen. Call them out, shame them, to hell with them, which is exactly how I feel. Burn in freaking hell. Disgusting. And when I say, oh, yeah, they want to blur the lines, that is no exaggeration. Just in this tweet alone and in the replies and all kinds of stuff, there are these disgusting, gross, 30, 40 year old men in the replies saying, oh, well, you can't use the word pedo if they've been through puberty. Shut the heck up, bro. Shut up. Disgusting pervert. That is that they're trying to blur those lines and then they're going to keep blurring them more and more and more. We will not, we cannot let this slippery slope happen because slippery slopes do happen. We've seen them pervert society. I saw it with the two. Isn't the age of consent is 16? Yeah, I think in most states. Dude, in most of the world, it's 16. Like, I'm pretty sure in Canada, it's 16. Mexico, 16. Most of Europe is like 16 or under. Asia, it's 16 or under, depending. Middle East, it's like 13. But it's also dependent on being married. But, yeah, that's another thing. But, yeah, no. Like, 16 is pretty much the global standard for, like, the majority of countries. I wouldn't consider that to be pedophilia, though. Is it weird? Yeah, like, why the fuck are you a 32-year-old man trying to hook up with a 16-year-old? Like, that's creepy. <laughs> like, I don't know, man. Like, personally, as a fucking 25-year-old, I wouldn't even want to be with an 18-year-old because I would have nothing in fucking common with that person. At all, most likely. So, yeah, that's it's weird. But, yeah. It's not technically pedophilia. Like, I don't really consider that to be a pedo thing. It's just creepy. I mean, if it's legal, then you're not really doing anything wrong. I mean, she loves to quote the Bible, which is kind of funny because, you know, again, back in biblical days, that would have been completely normal. So, I don't know, dude. I don't really like doing this whole argument like, oh my god, a pedophile, like, unless it's like a fucking 13 year old or something obvious, like, I don't really like throwing out the term pedophile, loose. Minimum age of consent in Virginia is 18, unfortunate for you. I know, man, it should be 29. We can I need to protect my virtue. Cannot allow this. Do not let them change terms. Just, you know... Girls can go through puberty at like nine as well. We're not gonna, we're not gonna be, mm -mm, we're not gonna be shifting the goalpost on this, okay? A pedo is a pedo, and th that I, I will call it like I see it, like we see here, and like we see here. So yeah, she got colossally ratioed on this. Twitter was a trip yesterday. I yeah, like the whole sixteen thing is fucking weird. She should have just put eighteen, and nobody would have fucking cared. I don't know. Odd choice, in my opinion. Was trending. Um, this whole topic just exploded. Very fucking dumb decision. But this is disgusting. And I want to tell people, and I cannot stress enough, I want to tell you guys, if anybody is following her, even any other of these manosphere gurus, and for the women who are following these gold-digging gurus as well, these people who push this crap... Yeah, I'm a 25-year-old minor, bro. Be careful. Don't loot me. They're made for each other, right? Because they, oh, well, this is a, a woman is only worth something if she's young. Well, what happens when a guy, let's say a 40-year-old guy does get a 19-year-old and then he finds out that she can't have children, then what? Then he's just going to discard her and throw her to the side because she's worthless now? Let's look at an example from the Bible. When Abraham was with Sarah and she could not conceive, he stuck by her because he loved that. He fucked the whore. Like... Dude, he fucked his slave. What the fuck is she talking about? He stuck with her. He literally boned his fucking slave and had kids with the slave chick. The fuck is she talking about? <laughs> she didn't fucking stay loyal. He literally busted a nut in his fucking servant. It's worthless now. Let's look at an example from the Bible. When Abraham was with Sarah and she could not conceive... He stuck by her because he loved that woman. That was his wife. And so while he did take her servant and have a child with her, that wasn't even... <laughs> Yo, let's just gloss over that fact. That for, I think, what is it, like 20 years, he's fucking his wife's servant? 
you know, let's just gloss over that little fact. But yeah, he he stayed loyal. Absolutely fucking loyal. <laughs> Bro. Oh my god. Tiger man with a five. I found out about pearly things through Tree of Logic dunking on her on Twitter. Tree of Logic is pretty funny, by the way. I yeah, I don't really know much about the pearly things, chick, but I don't know, dude. I try to stay out of the fucking whole, like, red pill, manosphere type shit because it's really cringe for the most part. His choice. That's what she she asked him to do. She wanted him to do when there were problems that arose from that. Yeah, well, he had to stay with her because divorce back then was a no-go. If you married somebody, divorce was not on the fucking table no matter what. And if you couldn't have kids with your wife, you fucked the slave and then had kids with the slave instead. And, you know, your wife had to suck it up that as a result because that was not the way that God intended for a husband and wife to become one with one another and all that and now later Sarah did conceive because that was God's promise for her and it happened but to me that is just a beautiful example of how you know they they were together and loved each other and a biblical example of marriage is not a trans just a entirely transactional thing now, uh there's plenty of examples of that now there are some standards there are some preferences that people are going to have on both sides and both sides should equivalently be able to match those standards and their expectations in their own way but like i said earlier what happened what happened to telling people that hey how about we look for our husbands or, or wives out of love how about we let that be the main focus Instead of treating people like disposable cattle. You know, all of this transactional, all, I see it from the women's side on TikTok all the time with these women. I saw her with a five face wise. You still think she's ugly. You hurt my feet. She ain't my type, bro. That's all I'm going to say. Like, you know, go forth, man, and conquer. But she is not my type at all. That's all I can say. I ain't gonna shit. I'm I'm not gonna shit on your girl, bro. But she is not for me. Daryl's on with the two. Griffin is a red pill confirmed. That's right, man. I don't need the blue pill because you know my dick works. Who were just like, oh yeah, you need to be with a guy who's a little bit uglier than you at the very least because then you can manipulate him more. And you don't want a guy who has options, but he has to have a whole bunch of money. That it's just pure manipulation, and it is selfish, and it is disgusting. And I don't know how anybody could live a happy life being so selfish because love is a selfless thing. Love is placing people above yourself. So how can you truly love if you are only with somebody for what they can do for you? You can't. And this manosphere womanosphere whatever the crap both sides are ruining society they are ruining dating they are hurting people and there are innocent people in stuck in the crossfire of it all as well now here's what i kind of wanted to close i do agree that the whole fucking manosphere shit and like fucking feminist and all that type of shit they definitely are ruining dating for a lot of people because they reflect literally maybe the 3% on either side that's like fucking batshit crazy. You know, feminists make men seem all evil and fucking red pillars make women seem like a bunch of <laughs> money-grubbing whores. Like, yeah, no. I agree with that. These people are like fucking horrible to take advice from. You should not listen to them other than to laugh. Daryl's on with the two. Don't talk bad about my Mia Khalifa too. I, ah, I don't care, bro. She's yeah. literally a fucking <laughs> 10 times BBC taken champion of Pornhub. That bitch belongs to the fucking sewers, not even the streets. I'll talk my shit all I want. I was on here. I made this tweet where I said Twitter was a riot today because it was. I was trending. <laughs> Um, I said, in all seriousness, though, what the manosphere and womanosphere hey, do alike is pit us against each other, and that's not dog. good. Society's problems don't fall on just one gender. The real problem is spiritual warfare. Twitter isn't real life, thank God. Which is yeah, what's up, I big mean, dog? Uh, and so I just can't, I can't stress this enough, guys. Do not now. Now we're gonna sometimes take advice from other human beings. That happens, but just realize that human beings are flawed. Okay, don't, don't. 
put, put too much don't put too much value in a human being's advice i don't care who they are even mine look at the bible my goal when i'm giving people advice is to try to 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 offer advice in a, from a biblical lens as much as possible we should be seeking the bible for life advice okay and people who can say oh well, i'm not so we should get married at 13. <laughs> bruh Christian, blah, 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 what about this, what about this? Look at all of God's commandments. Look at how when we veer from the- I mean, bro, God literally spirit-fucked a 13-year-old, so... <laughs> like, God hit up the Virgin Mary with his fucking divine <laughs> intervention, let's say, and put a baby up in that chick, so... Bruh. The Bible society crumbles. There's a reason for it. So whether you believe it or not does not make it any less true than it is. So even if someone is amazing, see, like really, you know, good, moral, upstanding person, you cannot get, take all of your life advice from a hu flawed human being who has made mistakes and who will continue to make mistakes. I speak as myself, too. I have made mistakes. Yeah, I've dude. She told God that she was 23. It wasn't his fault. Made mistakes way in the past. I've made mistakes recently, and I will make mistakes in the future. Maybe. And I, 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 I will just, I just give everything to God, and I pray that I can, can do better and What's stay on the path, me, man, to prevent oh even more mistakes from happening. Okay, so uh, the last thing I want to do is have people put uh -oh. all their faith and trust in me because I'm not going to be perfect, and I'm not. I think he's got to take a dump. People in the best direction. I, I even right, when I'm doing the best I can. Is. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Just Read your Bible every single Cops day. The Word of God all... is yeah, alive. Yeah, the ship play okay? while and I take him out to take that a dump. When you soften... All right, I think we've heard enough of that. So I'm just going to put this on while I take my dog out, and I will be back. Cops have to deal with all sorts of violent and horrifying criminals in their job. But what happens when it's their own children that they have to arrest? Dad! Get in the car. You're arrested for DUI. On the 28th of December 2022, a witness had observed a white vehicle strike a traffic light and then quickly drive off. A part of the vehicle's bumper had fallen off in the road after the hit. Around 15 minutes after the call, police located the suspect's vehicle at a gas station across the road. But the driver was the last person they expected. Come back from Applebee's? Yeah, I had a drink. Okay. How old are you? 21. My dad is, um... Listen, your bumper's in the road over there. Did you just hit that pole? No, I promise you I did not. No? The very thing 21-year-old Teresa says is that her dad is an officer with the local PD, possibly hoping that he'd come and get her out of the situation. But the cops at the scene are sure that things are way past that. You left Applebee's. Yeah, I left Applebee's. You cut through the plaza. You came out by Lowe's and Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Yeah. Did you hit the traffic yeah. pole that's no, right there? No, I did not hit the traffic pole. This part was hanging off already. Uh, I hit a deer in Pennsylvania because I go to school in do you smoke marijuana recreationally? No, I do not smoke marijuana universally. Universally, smoking marijuana isn't the only part of her story that doesn't make any sense. She's saying that her bumper was already hanging off from an accident in Pennsylvania around 25 miles away, and it just happened to fall off right as another car identical to hers struck a traffic light. But Teresa has a trick up her sleeve that might just get her out of this. At least, that's what she hopes. I hit a deer. I hit a deer before this. You can ask my dad. This piece fell off the traffic light that you hit. Hey, you not go. Six seven. Do you have another unit out with you? Oh my God, he's a sheriff's officer. All right, officer. hang out. Over the course of just a few minutes, Teresa brings up her dad over five times, obviously praying that he'll be able to find a way for her to get out of this. But before he can come to rescue her, the cops are starting to zero in on what really happened and begin to get at least some of the truth from Teresa. What? Did you drive away because you're scared because you had maybe had one drink and you think you're drunk yeah. and you might get arrested, but you don't seem like you're drunk? Yes. So you want to just tell the truth? Yes, I'm telling you the so truth. So after Applebee's, did you hit a t traffic pole? You can't miss it. It lights up. It's red, green, and yellow. I hit a Curb. You hit a traffic signal. No, oh, I hit a curb. Yeah, you went up the curb, you hit the traffic signal, the traffic signal fell down, and you left. I was texting. Okay. Call my daddy would tell you. Well, well here's, here's the thing. Promise your dad, the sheriff's officer, wasn't driving your vehicle today. In just this one short conversation, Teresa admits that she did hit something, that she's more intoxicated than they realized, and that she was texting while driving. Three driving faults that can each come with their own punishment. So now that the truth has come out, the detectives decide to speak with her father, John. But it turns out he's not there to help her. Hey, John, how are you? Um, uh, so your daughter is being a crash. Okay. Where's the damage on the car? Okay, the damage on that car, on the car there, I think it was like the front 
right bumper? John explains that Teresa did hit a deer earlier and that the damage was on the front right bumper, but it was nowhere near as serious as the damage the car was currently sustaining. Can I come out? Are you guys out there? Uh, that's up to you. I'll, I'll see if she wants you to come out if she wants, you know, you to drive her home. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. I'll let, me, let me come out there and then I'll see you guys. Can you help me? Thank you. Okay, all right, sounds good. It looks like Teresa isn't going to be getting the salvation she was hoping for from her dad. And just five minutes later, he arrives at the scene to talk with the cops. What's, what's up? So, what you saying, like, and where the damage was there, doesn't really make too much sense. No. Tried to get some more information out of her, but and then that piece of bumper there. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. for the other one, was it just like the bumper wasn't hanging like that? Yeah, no, so what it was is um, basically this was intact. Okay. Um, this piece was missing, but the scratch is here. It was all That's all from well, the deer that she used to use. So right now, this is going to be my call. Okay, I'm going to have to be going to be for my call. Okay, who's your supervisor? Not that much, dude. I'm just asking. The cops who were first at the scene almost seem as though they're expecting John to try and make excuses for his daughter and get extra nervous when he asks who their supervisor is. Obviously, there are countless examples of corruption where officers, especially those in the higher ranks, are able to use their power to prevent their family from getting into trouble. However, the officers quickly realize all he's trying to do is gather all the information on the incident so he can make a fair assessment himself. This quickly becomes evident as he checks his text messages from her to try and create a timeline of events. I, I just want to show you this so you can see it. You home 1039. What do you think, how do you think that initial Talking because she probably hit it and was like, Dad, what the fuck do I do? Somewhere between 1045 and 11. L cops, bro. They should be helping out their own. Well, that's about right. I mean, lying to she knows that I'm a cop. She knows, yeah, yeah, she knows yeah, not to do that. Well, maybe she didn't even. Do you think she's. I'm not. No, I'm saying she didn't lie. Yeah. Okay. Now, I want to be very clear about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She might not even look at the freaking car to see if there's any difference. However, despite John's willingness to help the officers out, the sergeant at the scene asks him not to get involved, so to guarantee the integrity of the investigation. So far, everything other than Teresa's conduct has been perfect and is a great example of proper policing. So, it's back to focusing on what Teresa had mentioned earlier. She says she'd only had one drink at Applebee's, but it's starting to seem as though she may be a little more drunk than they realized. Suspicions that were only confirmed after some field sobriety tests. Everything that happened today, right? I don't think that you were okay to take the outfit from the Dad! So, dad! You know, dad! Of course my dad! Oh, your dad's right over here. Alright. You stop with the shit in the car. After being forced into the police vehicle by her own dad, Teresa was driven to the police station where her blood alcohol level was tested. It came back as 0.17%, over twice the legal limit. As of this upload, Teresa is still awaiting her penalty, but has been issued a court summons for driving under the influence, reckless driving, and failure to report a car accident. Teresa's dad followed protocol perfectly, but Kenneth Adams' dad did the exact opposite when he tried to abuse his power as commissioner to try and save his son from prison. Tell me who I call to find out. W dad, bro. If you ain't trying to help out your kids, then I don't know. It's the whole reason you're there. Out why he's in jail. You want me to sue the son of a county sheriff? In November 2022, Kenneth Adams was pulled over for running a stop sign. But as it turns out, Kenneth was in much more trouble than he realized. I was going, go. what did I do wrong? Okay, so the reason I stopped you, you didn't come to complete. Oh, I don't fault Joe Biden for helping out his son. Dude, if I was Joe Biden, I'd do the exact same fucking thing. Of course I would try to help my son. Duh. Who wouldn't? You stopped the stop sign? I did. And then you didn't have your turn signal on. Like, are y'all really acting like you would throw your kids under the fucking bus immediately at the first opportunity? You wouldn't try to help them beat the fucking case? Like... I sure did. Okay. I know for a fact I had my turn signal. Okay. That's why I was surprised you were pulling me over, but whatever. The officer then took his license and ran it through the system, where he would discover Kenneth had a warrant out for burglary and theft of a vehicle. All of a sudden... Well, considering that I'm Key and Daryl's owner saying they would, that probably means that they would not. Kenneth becomes defensive and refuses to exit the vehicle. Uh, can I get you to step out of the vehicle with me? What are you doing? No, what, what's going on? Seriously, what's going on? You have a warrant. How your, do I have a warrant? I don't know how you have a warrant, but it's on our system right now. Like, dude, something is fucking harmless as a DUI unless they're like actually like slamming into someone else's car who fucking gives a shit I have an active warrant out of 7th district court here in San Juan I've gone to no that's incorrect like what did the chick hit like a sign or something like who cares okay, I've gone well, to on our system. right or did I miss something I don't think she like fucking killed a family of four or some shit like that she hit a traffic light who cares right now well, you I'm not gonna argue with you about it you're gonna go to jail tonight just make her pay to fix it 
warrant, okay? Uh, no, I'm not. Dude, this, this Mr. is absurd. Mr. Adams, you do have an active warrant <laughs> for your arrest. Just make her pay, fix it. Who gives a shit? And, so, you, and well, who, who issued the warrant, though? The court the court. For, for what, though? Because I've gone to court for everything. There should not be an active warrant for me anywhere, dude. Kenneth claims that he's already been to court for his previous crimes, but the warrant still calls for his arrest. For the majority of smaller cases, the suspect is tasked with turning in the documents that prove that they've been to court and completing any classes they were made to attend by the judge. Without those documents, the court cannot confirm they attended anything. So when Kenneth forgot to turn his in, the warrant remained open, and the police had no way to tell that he had in fact been to court. Issued October 13th. Who cares that she could have killed someone? Dude, every single time you get in the fucking car, you can kill someone. If we're going to penalize people for what they could have done versus what they did, every single person in this fucking chat at some point in their life would be charged with attempted fucking murder or involuntary manslaughter or something stupid. If you pick up your fucking phone in the car while you're driving, then technically you're breaking the law and you could have killed someone. Like... You don't get charged with fucking attempted murder because you fucking changed the song on your phone when you're driving. For what? I had some felony charges, burglary charges. Dude, I've been to court for that. No, no, I've been to court for that. You want to know the charges? Yeah, I do. So it has two burglary charges listed, a theft charge, uh -huh. a mischief. That's on my old case. Uh, three charges of burglary of a vehicle and yeah. a criminal trespass. Yeah, what, what, why is that floating up now? Kenneth was taken away to the station, but this is when his father, Bruce Adams, turned up, who turned out to be the county commissioner for the local area. How convenient for Kenneth. Immediately after arriving at the scene, Bruce demanded to know what was going on and quickly started to show signs of corruption. Yeah, I'm just not in favor of throwing people in prison over stupid shit. Like, if they damage something, make them pay to fix it. But putting someone in fucking jail and giving them this awful criminal record for basically something that didn't hurt anyone except themselves is pointless. I don't know. Like, shit, dude. <laughs> I don't really think hitting a fucking traffic light is worthy of being a convicted felon. But hey, to each their own. Option. Where's Kim? He's in jail. They took him. You like took him to jail? They took him to jail and I stayed here with the car. Why? For no, not even community service, dude. Just make him pay for the repairs. Do you know how expensive those fucking traffic lights probably are? Tens of thousands of dollars. Like, the bitch is going to be paying that shit off forever. Warrant. Who do I call to find out? <laughs> like, shit. Right. The warrant? You're a police officer. That's worse than having to pay, like, five grand for a fucking attorney to get you out of a DUI. Because that's what it costs. Like, any attorney can get you out of a DUI conviction. It's very easy to get out of them. It just costs money. So, if you're talking about punishment, the greater punishment would just be to have her pay to fix the fucking light versus pay for a good lawyer to get her out of the DUI. So the better lesson would be to have her pay to fix the thing versus learning, oh, if I get a good enough lawyer, I can get out of whatever I need to. Because that's the truth. DUIs are very easy to get out of. I silo with the five. I was four times the limit when I was just sitting in my car with a flat tire when I was arrested. Damn, man. Didn't you say you beat it, though? You beat the case? What if you can't afford a lawyer? Then... You're broke! You're fucking poor! Get fucking wrecked. Officer, tell me who I called to find out why he's in jail. I gotta be careful with this stuff, Bruce. You understand that? Okay. That's the warrant. Okay, so it says warrant status active, offense, burglary, burglary, theft, criminal mischief, burglary of a vehicle, burglary of a vehicle, burglary He's of a vehicle. He's already been to court over that. It's, you saw the warrant right there. I, yeah, I showed you the warrant. He's been charged with that, and he has a plea in abeyance on all of it. What do you want me to do? I want you to turn him loose. I can't turn him loose, Bruce. Who can? Nobody can. He's been yeah, like, why do you care if he gets turned? All right, this dude is kind of dumb. Like, who cares? If he's got a warrant out, fucking let him just go back. It's not a big deal. And arrested for a warrant. The courts can. And the warrant's false. Huh? The warrant's not false. false. You want me to sue the son of a f***ing county sheriff? Yeah, this is kind of dumb, bro. Like, if he has an active warrant out and it's just a mistake, then let him fucking go. They'll get the mistake sorted, and then it's all good. Like, yeah, this is kind of dumb. I wouldn't die on this hill. Because he arrested my kid on a false warrant? <laughs> the warrant's right there. Bruce is obviously trying to abuse his position and influence the commissioner to try and... Yeah, like, if that's the case, then... 
fucking sue the shit out of the county and then the charges will probably get dropped as a result. And save his son from the law. But luckily, this officer stands his ground and refuses to cave in. Eventually, though, Kenneth was released from jail, the warrant was withdrawn, and no further action was taken against Bruce. Yeah, see? If it was a faulty warrant, just let him go, get it sorted out, and then it's done. There you go. If it was an honest mistake, it'll be fixed. I sally with the five. The next case is in September. Delayed again. I still have my license, too. Yep, that's the thing, bro. It's like, if you have a good attorney, they can get you out of basically all the punishments for DUI. It's very easy to get out of. I mean, most... I mean, there's... I shouldn't say most people, but a lot of people get DUIs. Like, it's one of the most common fucking, you know, felonies, quote-unquote. And in most cases, they've never hurt anyone. But the officers that arrested this law student weren't as lucky. Marion Humphrey Jr., son of retired nothing. county judge Marion Humphrey Sr., was pulled over after an officer allegedly witnessed him driving dangerously. Footage shows him swerving slightly after missing his exit. Marion is lit up by the officer and pulled over. He's then told the officer witnessed him nearly wreck his car and is suspected of dangerous driving. When did you rent the car? Yesterday. When you got to turn it back in being a law student, Marion asks if the officer has probable cause for pulling him over. The officer struggles to give a good answer before claiming Marion seems super nervous. First of all, being nervous isn't a crime, and isn't evidence towards a crime either. And secondly, Marion actually carries himself incredibly well in this situation. He complies with the officer's requests, asks why he's being pulled over, and why he's being held. He even calls his dad to listen in on the entire arrest, something the officer clearly didn't like, as he then asks to search Marion's U-Haul. <laughs> Marion does an extremely good job of eloquently showing how terrifying it can be to be stopped by the police while maintaining a calm and respectful tone with the officer the whole time. Yeah, it's a good thing that cop is wearing a mask outside, bro. You know, he's saving lives right now. But regardless, Marion is placed in handcuffs for over an hour while the cops search his vehicle with a dog. According to the officer, the dog smelled narcotics and alerted the officers before even entering the U-Haul. Yeah, but it's a fucking rental. The dog alerted on narcotics in the vehicle, so I detained him and he's in the back car while I searched the vehicle. Yeah, I would have never let him search the fucking truck. No, but he almost did, so that's probably what I'm saying. Daddy, he's arresting me. He's arresting me. He's arresting me, man. Predictably, the cops find nothing in the vehicle. Marion has since opened up a lawsuit against the officers, claiming they violated his 4th and 14th Amendment rights. As of this video's upload, the case is still ongoing. Cops have to deal with all sorts Good. of violent and horrifying crimes. Yeah, that was pretty fucking obviously a wrong fucking move. Like, oh no, he missed his exit and swerved as a result. No shit. Everyone does that. Yeah. That was an L cop moment, bro. I know the cops didn't plan anything. It is surprising. That's the thing. It's a rental too, dude. Like, do you know how many people probably like fucking spill their <laughs> whatever the fuck in the back of that thing? Dude, shit. Like I, every single rental car I've ever been in, at least recently, has smelled like fucking the dankest kush imaginable, bro. <laughs> like, that shit fucking reeks. So would a cop pull me over and bring the fucking dogs out and be like, oh my God, bro, you've been smoking weed. The truck smells like it. It's like, no, it's a fucking rental. It's not mine. I'm not in control of what people did in it prior to me being in it. Like, you know? So yeah, no, that was a massive cop L. I sell it with the five. My attorney said it's normal due to me having zero past crimes. I'm clean as a whistle until now. Yeah, that's pretty much how it goes, dude. It's like most uh most judges can sympathize. They'll just make you do like some bullshit thing, like oh you know, pay a fucking fee. It won't be charged as a felony. Do community service, shit like that. 
or attend fucking defensive driving courses, you know, or go to an AA meeting, like, you know, that's typically what you'll have to do with most uh, DUIs. DEA with the two first clip with girl happened in my hometown in New Jersey. Hopefully she didn't get in too much trouble. That shit was kind of dumb, man. I don't I just don't agree with locking people up for stupid shit personally or making felons out of people for honest mistakes. You know, like everybody fucks up every once in a while. And if nobody's like actually hurt, like, use it as a learning experience versus, you know, trying to fuck up somebody's life. That's the way I look at it, but, you know. I think having a bunch of non-convicted felons running around contributing to society is better than making felons out of people and victimless crimes. So. But, hey, that's just me. Let's see. So, oh god, gross, Whoa. nasty. So I just brought this real life anime salmon dish to life, and now we're gonna try it. All cool. right, cheers, you guys. Cheers, cheers. cheers. Real life anime salmon dish. She does know that food exists before it appears in anime, right? That what more likely happened was that the anime took a real recipe and put it in the fucking show. <laughs> oh my fucking god. Dude, this is so sad. We really had kids at like the most like tense point of our life. My own dad called me after he seen the video drop. He's like, no way, you know her? I feel like I was a guy in my previous life. I love boobies. I'll keep that at school. All right, guys, I'm about to bring Kurenai no Buta. I don't know the name of the anime, but we're gonna bring it to real life and we're gonna make an amazing salmon dish that you guys can make in your house. But first and foremost, I'm here with my friend. I'm Asia from These Foods. I'm a sidekick. Be clean from These Foods. Shout out Violet Myers, bro. If you guys been watching us on YouTube or you're from our side, you guys know we got mad love for her, bro. It shows nothing but support for the Rasa, so we gotta come support her interest, which is anime. And we don't watch anime, so, but we're here for her. In case you guys don't know, they're like one of my favorite YouTubers. Jeez. I've been watching them for a long time, so when we finally got to hang out, I was like, yo, it's like, I gotta bring you on the channel, so. And we here. Come on. Oh, yeah. nice. Dude, they definitely Eiffel Towered that hoe afterwards. Not Nia with the five. I have to do a defensive driving course to expunge an accident on my record, and I'm almost done with it. Yeah, I did a, a defensive driving course for a speeding ticket, but yeah. That shit's easy. You just sit there for a couple hours and then leave. Oscar Rodriguez with the two. The prison industry complex thrives on slave labor. Mm, I wouldn't even say it's that. It's just profitable to fucking, you know, pay for prisoners. For the prisons, at least. Because the uh, most of the prisons are privately owned. So, you know, those prison owners benefit from charging the state to house criminals. So, yeah. It's a business. The longer somebody stays in jail, the more money the prison owners make. I can make microwave food and I can make a nice cereal dish. So we're going to start with the salmon dish. So first, let's start with preparing the salmon. So we're going to have to remove the skin. So wash your hands before. before you so apparently I found out this is Vital Myers' set too, you know? So mm -hmm. got to make sure I wash your hands before I start touching them. That's the dishwasher so oh. <laughs> <laughs> So we're gonna start cutting out the salmon first? Yeah. Okay, so in case you get like salmon fillets that already have the skin in it, we don't have the skin. Well, actually, do fire. we have skin? Do we have skin? No, nah, the way they prepared oh, no, it is yeah. fire. I think it's ready to go. Oh no, this one has skin right here. A little yeah. bit of foreskin right there. You remove the skin from the salmon and season it with salt and pepper. I think salt and pepper is a little basic. I'm gonna get a little extra seasoning. All right, bet. Um, I'm I'll gonna start that. warming up I'll the skillet. Fall. How did you guys make? Like, how did these foods get creative? So the way we actually started doing YouTube together, it was kind of like organic. It really uh, originated. Like, you, know, you don't like, need to over season fish. Salmon has an actual flavor. It's not like a white fish where it's bland and flavorless. Salmon already has flavor to it. You don't need to over-season salmon. Me and Angel meeting, and Angel had like a whole like set of friends he was already kicking it with, and I had my set of friends I was kicking it with, so it just, you know, it made sense, and we're all just vibing when we all started clicking up, and... First video we ever did was me and this he helped me. I already knew I kind of... Yeah, I don't know why they're removing the salmon skin. It adds flavor. I wanted to 
to do YouTube, I just better know how to get it started. So um, I went on a trip to Miami and I pretty much flew this out. <laughs> like a straight bad. <laughs> so I flew him out and then like, I had just bought my camera. So we started filming and that was the first YouTube video ever. And after that, we started doing TikToks and it just blew up. But no, yeah, he flew me out like a straight bad. <laughs> and he's paid for my flight. He just told me I got to pay for my food over there. Well, you can take the skin off as you're eating it but you should always cook salmon with the skin on because the skin has like fat and flavor in it that diffuses into the actual salmon like, fuck, you know, I'm a, and I'm it a... keeps it moist on the bottom did you yeah. guys go to school together nah, nah. I, I met him at the barber shop I was, I was a barber you know what i'm saying so like okay. started cutting his hair and then i was like bro just pull it was up. random too so <clears throat> i used to have a barber and that food was like oh i forgot you were coming in today you want to get cut with my boy and i was like fuck. i seen he had just cut some food up and that shit was fresh i was like fuck it come on he was cutting my hair he's like you want to go with me to the rosarito i was like let's go <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm sure Violet knows this, but like, bro, like, you mean me, I'm hella friendly, you know? Yeah, you I, are, yeah. I'm like cool as fuck, like, you know, I'm, you I'm just, just nice. So when I met my boy, I, I didn't even know this kid. I was just like, <laughs> he seems chill, you know? It looks like, it looks like he can get drunk with me. So I was like, fuck it, it was a Rosarito. That was like our first trip ever. And coming back, it was just like, man, we just wanted to keep kicking it and, you know, it just worked out. I feel like it's easier for guys to be friends than with girls. Because girls can mm -hmm. have like trust issues. Or like, you guys be hating on each other or something? Yeah. Sometimes it'd yeah. be like that, yeah. Do you feel like girls hate on each other a lot? Like, yeah. Real? I mean, yeah, look at your comments. Uh, <laughs> you guys, okay, damn. so my, my fans, they when they see me with guys, some of them, they can be like haters towards the guys yeah. or they'll just be like oh that's cool like they'll like check out their page and they're like oh he's dope they'll follow because yeah. my real fans like the ones who just don't watch me but like the ones who like have a connection with me they'll gravitate towards anyone they'll be like, I'm have a connection aka they bought your only fans follow them gonna follow them because they like oh, they approach yes girls are a little bit more mean that's why i feel like i have more guy friends than girlfriends yeah, because sure. guys are just cooler to get along with but also I no it's because the guys want to fuck you so they'll put up with your shit I feel like I was a guy in my previous life. Why do you feel like you were a guy in your previous life? That's <laughs> interesting for to say. Well, first my mom, like she had someone do a reading for me and she saw that I was a man. In my what? Life. Yeah. And it makes sense because I'd be doing stuff that I feel like a normal girl wouldn't do with a guy. Oh, yeah. she's not like the other girls, guys. She's just like us. I just hear a little kid yelling in the back. I literally brought my son to film. I'm a full-time daddy, so you know what I'm saying? Audience, let's bear with my little boy. How was it transitioning to being a dad? Man, it was, it was crazy because um, Angel will tell you himself because he has a kid as well. We really had kids at like the most like tense point of our life, like just blowing up, like, you know, trying to figure out our career-wise, you know, all this YouTube thing. Like a lot of people don't know, like it's, it really is a career, you know, like you kind of got to like really like, you know, focus on structuring the business. It gets a little difficult. You know what? When people say get a real job, because people always tell me that time they're like, oh, what you do isn't a real job. But I'm like, say that. I pay taxes, come up with the concept. Oh, it's a real job. It's just the most unrespectable job on planet fucking earth so it's like even doing this is you know even your time is work you know it's a lot to be a creator yeah. and i think that's why most people can't do it or they fail because you know they don't have that passion yeah. for it but not even just that but like it's hard to juggle like having a second job to support your content you know because obviously like content just doesn't like happen overnight and no. a lot of people lose interest or like you know kind of lose motivation because they don't see the money following yeah, with it it takes a while for the money to start coming in yeah, yeah. literally bro. so right now we just seasoned our salmon fillets and we're just going to add them to the pan so come on this shouldn't take long. you don't see how she's ugly hey man it's different strokes so to each their own i want to cook i like my salmon medium rare yeah i think that's the way it's got to be well so at least she doesn't like your fish overcooked so that's good you said you wanted to know how we ran into each other how'd you run into us like on media so you guys came up with my recommendation on youtube and mm -hmm. i was looking for new vloggers to watch i like to get inspiration from other youtubers okay. to bring to my content so then i watched your guys as well it was these foods go to six flags and i was like yo this is funny because it reminded me of all the people i went to school with and you guys were relatable and we're both perfect. hispanic i feel like it was yeah like that's like, like there's not that many hispanic youtubers See, well at least really, right? before there was what? Like, no, before uh. I the fuck? There's a ton of Hispanic YouTubers. I feel like now there's a lot of Latino influencers, yeah, but I feel like yeah. a lot of them were girls and they were just doing makeup. Makeup, you know, girly things, yeah. Girly things, yeah, but you guys were lifestyle bloggers. Doing ratchet ass shit. Yeah, <laughs> and it was, like I said, it was relatable. It was like, fun. Yeah, hard. So a lot of people, I think that's why you guys continue mm -hmm. to grow. Funny, do we actually see your comment like maybe like 17 weeks after you commented it? No yeah. cap. And like mean. literally the latest f bro, like I remember going back to the video because I think my friend Manny uh -huh. was like, bro, like one of my homies told me that uh, Griffin is my favorite Hispanic YouTuber. Muy bueno. Uh, that famous like, por favor comment on your thing and i was like who i was like i was trying to figure out who it was everyone kept telling us like, like send us a screenshot of your comment and i, I actually comment? dm'd you you dm'd me yeah you never replied to me and i thought i don't know because you had a boyfriend or not you know i don't yeah, know what was going no, on with that no. situation <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah no i just don't respond to my dms i yeah. used to i used to be like who's famous and signing my dms <laughs> but i just kind of like stopped because it was just like too much but cam was the one she's like oh respond um bk was telling me and then i did duno obviously we yeah, yeah. facetimed because i was like i want to say hi to them you know on <laughs> their channel and... no that was dope bro for real like just to even know like someone at your level 
level as far as you know just success like you know acknowledging us it was dope like i think it was probably one of our favorite acknowledgements from like yeah it was dope our, bro on, so like you know we really I appreciate it for us yeah. I, I was like i don't think you're gonna know who i am no nah, yeah, like, we, we know who you are bro I don't, the thing <laughs> yeah is, bro like, I, I, come I, on bro people say i'm humble about it but like for real i really don't Jesus know how like fuck. big i am oh, until like, i go outside and hey, like, it's, take it's, a picture to the point where my own dad called me after he seen the video drop he's like no no way you know her and i was like i was like yeah bro i was like now i know what you be doing when everyone goes to sleep bro what about you guys because i'm sure you guys get recognized a lot too well now we do yeah yeah I feel like the beginning stages, it was like, you know, more of like us in our city, but like now it's like, fuck. like we'll go outside of the county, you know, like different places and it's just always love, you know what I'm saying? It's dope. Yeah. It's pretty dope. And it's also cool because lately we've been getting like a lot of different ethnicities just like recognizing us too. It's not just Ross anymore. Okay. It's like, we've been having a few white boys now. <laughs> no, in our most recent Six Flags vlog, uh, we yeah. answered a FaceTime call like of a fan. He was geeking up and then we're like trying to figure out like, is it someone's homie or like, yeah. like who is this guy? Because, you know, usually we don't see white boys are like trying to show love like that. The white guy with long hair, he goes, la, la, la. and I was like, no way. That's dope, like, but it's cool to see you know, like, not just the Spanish ready? or when it's done. Now we're gonna take the salmon off and we're gonna make the sauce with the with juice. the sap with the juice. Yeah, so I was gonna get a clean one. Yeah, we're a gonna clean get some one. Oh, get some Wait. Ooh. So what kind of music do you guys listen to? Oh, Jeezy, you know, Phoenix Flexing, O3 Burrito. That's my vibe. Yeah. <laughs> Who? We're also like super like into culture type of shit. So we love Forza Regia, Peso Puma, Nata, like all those foods go crazy. That was gas. Did you guys ever have an emo face? Yeah. Yeah, for a yeah? day. For a day. No, no, not for a day. I saw that, I know that video, by the way. Shout out to Karen and Eddie. No. I did just because I had one a person that I used to know that he was into that shit, So I remember that food make more like, well, not make me. But <laughs> I was just a little kid, so I was wearing like those spectral bills. I oh, the, hell, the, 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 the checkered bro. ones too, I the checkered swear. ones? Yeah. I'll ask you, we'll ask you with the two. If you hate how he talks, you're going to hate my cousin. Uh, does he sound like the typical Californian? If so, then maybe. I don't know. These just, these people scream California to me, and it's irritating. I don't know. The way most Californians speak, at least in like the social media sphere, is just very irritating. Yeah, I love boobies. Yeah, I got kicked out of school because of that one. This is my first time hearing this. That's crazy, bro. Linkin Park and shit. Linkin Park. Now nah, this guy's over here bumping OGZ, talking about. Okay, so now we're making the sauce. What? I'm gonna try it. I wanna try it. Okay. You ever turn like he was moving? My favorite. It's very fatty though. Mm. I was saying. But that's Atlantic, so you know. I got the pan ready. We're gonna make our sauce. So we're gonna add more butter. So cut like two tablespoons of butter. This is some super white butter. Yeah, it is very white. I think that's like I got everything organic. You handle the sauce, my boy. Yeah, gotcha. you do the sauce. And we're gonna add some flour. So let me see. Get the flour and the milk. We're gonna do two scoops of flour and two then scoops, two scoops. And one cup of milk. So you watch any cartoons? Uh cartoons, Danny Phantom. Not Dora Explorer, uh Diego. <laughs> oh my boy, Diego. Uh, I used to think Diego and Dora were like dating. Aren't they like cousins? It's kind of Cousin, kind of yeah. answer, right? If you were to have a dinner with three people, dead or alive, who would it be? Damn, that's a good ass question right there. One of them is Nipsey Hussle, because that's my favorite artist. Else. I don't even know, to be honest, that's kind of a hard one. I think my three people for sure has to be the owner of Milk Boys. Kyle, you know, just speak to him about how he runs everything. Kobe, if he was alive. Mm. I love his mentality. I feel like, you know, growing up, outside of being a basketball player, like, he was very smart. Mentally strong, mm. too. And then my third word, my whole gang, you should, for sure. Yeah. I love going to dinner with- Bruh. So little fucking vision, man. Zero fucking vision. With the homies, that's like the best of the never. It's like a celebration every time we step out. They're like your family, right? Your friends? Bro, like at this point, even closer than my family. Yeah. I see these guys more than, than anyone around me, to be honest. Besides my son, obviously. <laughs> so, doesn't it look like the anime food on the picture? It actually does look like the picture. Pull up the picture, I want to see now. I think ours looks way better. No, yeah, it looks way better, it looks for way sure. Way better, holy. These don't look like Vienna sausages, for sure. <laughs> These <laughs> no. look gas, bro. I'm going to be honest, bro. Violet sent me a couple yeah, options before we got here, said what you want to cook. That shit gas, bro. Look, it did not look appetizing on the anime book, but this looks fucking fire, bro. That looks so gas. That looks gross. Right, cheers, you guys. Cheers, 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 cheers. It looks like you ruined the fucking fish. Mm. Mm. Damn. Mm. That sauce on top is going stupid. Oh my god, so you guys, if this was like a book, how to cook for dummies, and I made it, you guys can make it too. Mm. If some food made this, you guys can make this. Yeah, hey, I'm quiet right now, so just not blessing. If you make these recipes, tag me on Instagram, tag me on Twitter. Follow these foods, follow VK, Mom. follow Angel. I have all of their information on the description below. So thank you guys. I'll see you on the next cooking video. Later. Bro, that should be gas for real, for real. No cap, bro. Amen. Bruh.
It depends on what type of salmon you buy. Oh, oh wait, fuck. It was already on the full screen. A lot of salmon, they actually inject with coloring to make it pink. Some of it they inject with coloring to make it look orange. So it depends on what type of salmon you're eating, where the salmon comes from, if they color it before they sell it. But, yeah. It really depends on where you're actually, like, sourcing the fish from. Depending, like, on the color, I feel like. I don't know. Because I've had pink salmon. I've had orange salmon. I've had kind of, like, really pale salmon. But there's different variations of it, obviously. Like, there's, you know... Scottish salmon is the best I've had, personally. The Scottish salmon. Like, I used to go to the sushi place, and the guy who, like, owned it would talk about, like, the different types of, uh, you know, salmon that he would serve, and his favorite was the Scottish salmon. And honestly, I agree, man. It was the best. So, I tried, like, the three different types or whatever. I don't remember what the fuck it was called, but, yeah. Yeah, Costco, I think, sells the Scottish salmon. Costco salmon is actually sushi grade, interestingly enough. Like, it's pretty much uh, sushi grade. As long as you buy it the day it was packaged, you can actually eat it raw. Which is kind of interesting. Like, Costco salmon is top quality. So, kind of interesting, man. I've eaten a lot of Costco sushi raw, so it's never fucked me up. Let's see... You gotta buy this. Bro, this again? Didn't we already watch this? You gotta buy this. First chance you get. Yeah, yeah I don't even know how many coins I got. Guy. Shut up. I got a thousand little coins. I'm saving up. I could have swore we've seen this U generation. I don't know. A $400,000 table and I lost it all. And did anybody hear anybody ask him that? Who was talking to him? Anybody? Who's talking to Mesa? Were you, were you talking to yourself? No, I was talking to a black person. We <laughs> <laughs> are friends in a circle, one bread in the center, and the last man who comes in the bread Eat the uh, bread, man. Uh, oh. We, we we call that cookie. I'm, I'm usually what the f are y'all talking, talking about? Welcome to the table. <laughs> Show play the cookie. Play hey, cookie. man. You want to play some cookie? No, I, I no, I don't want to play. Any, I'm debating playing poker with y'all. To be honest, like I'm. Like, <laughs> this is a not poker table. You guys are into I mean, some I, weird culinary. Sh I'm not into it. <laughs> raise it 25. Rosie O'Donnell, raise it 25. <laughs> okay. I just couldn't even fold. <laughs> How dare you disrespect me like that? You do. Your model yeah, looks kind of like Rosie O'Donnell. Oh, no, no, no. This model looks like me. Then you look like Rosie O'Donnell. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to break it to you. Do you know what bullying, bullying is? Bullying. I bet 50. Like making Repeat. fun of someone. How are you doing that? I can't do it. Bullying. <laughs> bullying. What the hell are y'all? Is this a res You can pay to speed up videos, but not skip. That is stone. We're playing poker. <laughs> I was trying to teach him things. I don't even know yeah. what that card's Bullying, bullying is a staple <laughs> part of growing up. I must be doing great then. Eat or be eaten. Yeah. I get bullied so in much. It's insane. It's on here. Is it because you look like? <laughs> Speaking of shit, that was not a dog whistle, guys. I promise. That was not a, a coded thing of me saying. Give me monies. Oski Woski with the ten. Two <laughs> X this. I want to get this done quickly. All right, man. Where's the Oh my god. See, that's bullying. Oh, what? No, I was asking a genuine question. I was concerned. I'm the one who. Oh, bullying. No. Bullying. Yeah. Yes. Bullying. Chifu, cyber bullying. That's for you. There you go. Oh, <laughs> I love it, bro. Bullying is <laughs> <laughs> very good, man. I love bullying. 
Uh, stop looking at me, Rosie. Oh, it's my time to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? You on the you on the west side of Brazil? Yes. Uh, Bro, what the fuck? You can see our PP. What was I gonna look up? There was you a video I did. No, it's because your girlfriend. Sure. Your girlfriend covers <laughs> it, so I can't really see oh, anything at the base. Bro, I need your father tomorrow. Oh, is, uh... <laughs> Doesn't bother me, bro. <laughs> Doesn't bother me, bro. Please look up right now instead. Okay. It all means the same thing. But gain, cancel each other. You know that means there's an ad in here. You guys are saying all this. It's probably not a good idea. I want to keep calling Rosie O'Connell. Oh. But that's not a, a slur. I mean, unless it's you. Not, what should be? What? Right. That's gonna mean to Rosie O'Donnell? No, no. We're not thinking yes. of her feelings. It's always me, me, me over there, huh? Rosie. Oh, bro, I miss your father in my bed. <laughs> my father would never sleep with you. You're too short and poor. Bro, he's my sugar daddy. No, man. no, you're too poor and short. Too short. Sorry. <laughs> you must be at least this tall. To my dad. Sorry, but. <laughs> and you don't quite measure up. Dude, he does laugh like a fucking chipmunk. You look like the princess, girl. What? Oh, she has Sounds like fucking exactly Alvin slender. and the Chipmunks <laughs> type shit. Well, he's the one making all the insults. I think there's just more me to love. Please, kill me. No, I don't. Rosie might get out of breath trying to kill you. Bro, shut the fuck up. I'm sick of it. I'm literally fucking sick of it. I get bullied Damn, every day on here. I'm fucking sick of it. Rosie O'Donnell is a famous millionaire celebrity. I'm How sick and tired of being called a fucking rapist. I'm tired of it all. Calm down, Rosie. Take a chill pill. Bro, just... Just Wait, do that. Whoa, why are we all muting? I said Rosie. Is that such a terrible thing? God, we you all... have a control. Do that. She ain't gonna add you on Instagram if you guys mute me. <laughs> oh, yeah, I bet you'll add me. <laughs> <laughs> Just breathe. Take a couple breaths. Breathe in and out. Think of cold cuts or whatever. Thanks, Rosie. Have. <laughs> are you okay? I <laughs> <laughs> have so many friends here. <laughs> this guy's growing. That guy. He's growing. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of funny now. Oh, what's an avatar? That doesn't even, it's not even You should just like, roll off. I'm just getting fed up because it's literally every fucking day. Hey, girl. This place isn't a healthy environment. This is a normal day for a uh, beautiful princess. <laughs> <laughs> Brother. Riven Gaming Confessions of an E-Bagger? That's right, man. Open your wallet and give me all of your monies. When you say, oh, she's a cat. I am what I am, bro. No. I can't help it. When you say she's a cat, because she's beautiful. When you see a chick and she's hot, you'd be like, oh, that bitch is hot as f Or you'd be like, oh, that bitch. Really? I say that <laughs> No, you're kidding me. Hey, you are so beautiful. Can you date me? Really? <laughs> I mean, it seems like it's working. So there's a, there's a difference between, like, hot and then Rosie. cute. Oh. <laughs> oh, I know, I know, I know. You want to know where Rosie's from? What? Arlington, Texas. What's your obsession with Rosie, guy? <laughs> no, that's her name. That's her name. That's her name. That's her name in real life. We're friends with her in real life. already had them fucking muted. They won't stop saying that. Dad, yeah, why'd you unmute us then? Stupid. Stupid. Oh, that's discriminatory. What's wrong with being So what if you like big black? Huh? Yeah, right? Yeah, Dave. Hey, man. I just like using it as an insult. Like, <laughs> I'm not calling you. No, 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 no. Should I send Rosie a gift? Maybe I should. Yeah. Yes. What do you think Rosie would like? Uh, there's just, I think there's food items. I'll take her some food. Yeah, you'll get her some food. <laughs> Do you know, man? Like, my mom's crazy. Me. I don't know how she's raising Yeah, hey, I, I gave her a gift. I know oh, she got it. I don't know yeah, what's really. happening in Brazil. <laughs> okay. I got it. It's a little, tre a little treat for you. Oh. It's a little treat. Look. Ice cream. The drumstick. Aww. <laughs> Damn, that's cold, Rosie. That's cold. We should like something else. Let's see. What else we Ah, uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Uh, uh, that facial expression. It's a glizzy. Yeah, he died from, like, fucking bro, COVID, bro. Basher <laughs> died <laughs> from fucking <laughs> uh, COVID. <laughs> Okay. No, it's just bullying. Oh, wow, bullying. I'm buying you gifts. Oh, uh, we are. No, I don't know these two assholes. <laughs> yeah, we do. Rosie. We go way back. Literally, ask her if her name's Rosie. She'll, Yo, she'll tell can you. Can you just leave me the f alone? Here, here. I'm buying you presents to make it up to you. Have you ever seen a movie What's called A League of Their Own? About the female baseball player? A League of Their Own. No. Julie. You know who my favorite uh, character in League of Their Own is? telling me that the thing banned him. Mm -hmm. This is Rosie O'Donnell's huh? character. Bro. Oh, that's why you're calling her Rosie. Like can't speak, bro. Oh, him? The guy, he just right? got com banned? Yeah, because you were saying yeah. slurs oh, over and over again. Yeah. Of course you got com banned. You were saying... He's crazy, man. This is we didn't, crazy. I, the, the worst thing I said is Rosie O'Donnell. These two were the ones who were saying Yeah, they were the ones saying all the slurs. I, I follow terms and conditions, and comparing someone's long, avatar to a movie star isn't a bad thing. How many weeks? <laughs> He's been for weeks. You gotta learn the poker banter of a little, a little you know, back and forth without having to use... back and forth, but yeah. you don't not supposed to go that hard. Y'all went too hard. She's, and she baited y'all into doing it. No, dude, he wasn't sick and tired of being called a pedo. He was sick and tired of being called a fucking rapist. And he was tired of it all. With her little routine that you fell for. You guys Holding my hands. Are you okay? And let's pray for my mom. <laughs> she is okay. in the kitchen. Make my dinner. <laughs> Yeah, so don't knock my beer. Offer one to Rosie. She's having a hard day. Yeah, he was like the original fucking YouTube cuck too, because he was like pimping out his girlfriend, and then she became an OnlyFans whore. <laughs> Bruh. Yeah, Rosie. In America, <laughs> America, America, you you eat rice and beans. You I kept on saying it so much. Damn, I just caught that too. He started yeah, calling Rosie. I straight up called her Rosie. <laughs> 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 dude, she, your avatar looks like Rosie O'Donnell. I mean, that's just, it's not even that bad of an insult. It's just a joke. No, dude, I'm, I'm so not tired of being called a knee beggar. I'm just tired of donations, dude. If you really want to piss me off, you know. Give me monies! It really just sends me up the fucking wall. Oh, sorry, I did not intend to do the program. <laughs> I like programmed him, dude. Head, dude. <laughs> this is the next level. <laughs> Irish, Jesus Christ, guy, you got pocket aces? <laughs>
Are they betting Aww. with real money or is this just like fucking fake Bro, shit? Food, please. <laughs> I know nothing about I know, VR poker. I know, but they're like mocking me. Shut up, cop man. Why you don't put this chicken inside your ass? <laughs> No, they just keep sending me food, you know, calling me fat. We never called you fat, no not once, fat. not once. Rosie O'Donnell's fat. That's you, that's, that's you saying that. No, because you I look like her. face looks like Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah, exactly. What, what means Rosie? I don't know. <laughs> it's a famous actress. Do you know no. who that is? Okay, she's some famous lady. Yeah, Olympian what's the lady. point of playing poker if you're not actually playing for money? I don't know, man. Isn't, like, the whole point, like, the fun aspect of it is making money? I don't really think poker is a fun game to play otherwise. In America. <laughs> I didn't know that. She was, I thought she was married with kids, Foreign videos. <laughs> no. no, I love this guy. I think she's in some movies, or she's like a comedian or something. She's both. She's oh, very accomplished. Right. Very accomplished lady. I just know what she looks like, and I know a lot of people make fun of her. Yeah, yeah. I like blackjack better. Yes. Oh, okay. Pretty much. Look, water. Oh wow. I don't know why they keep wasting their chips on you, bro. They're trying to make you feel better, dude. Right? How do you practice poker? It's literally just whatever you're dealt. <laughs> I don't know. And I guess you can practice bluffing and shit, but I don't know. CIA with the one. You're broke. You're fucking poor. Like I told you, Irish things are funny. <laughs> do you know what I, I do to stop the bullying? Hmm. I give my ass for all my friends. <laughs> they stop to bully me because they Yeah, I fucking hate love. getting money, man. <laughs> you know? Shit pisses no me way. off. I think he's trying to give you a hint because he's, he's lonely. <laughs> I think <laughs> it's a very subtle hint you got no there, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Gorlack to the story over there. <laughs> I don't know how to solve this problem. <laughs> that would be an insult. Here. I'll invite you to too. See you there. It was a great time. Oh, they all left. I'll see you there. <laughs> see. See? What's up, all friends? See. What's up, guys? Oh, my God. What the fuck are you doing here, man? Get the fuck out of here. Hey, hey, I'm here to play poker. Here to play poker. Don't get all hostile. Oh, man. Shut the fuck up. You are a big sucker, man. <laughs> oh, wow. Why, why are you not very nice. My balls here, man? You're not nice, man. You're not nice. I didn't say anything mean look, to you. Bro, look what you're doing with my friends. Oh, she left again already. Damn. Oh. Iris didn't even say hi. Oh. She left. You need, to, you need to have limits. You hey, calm limits. down. Leave me alone. You need to learn limits with your language and your insults. You need to conduct yourself no, in a more respectable bro, manner. Bro, bro. Respect manners, I say. Why you do that? I didn't say anything to her. I didn't say anything to her. Hey man, leave her alone. <laughs> All right. So, I sell her. I'm going to do your movie clip at the end. Since uh it may get copyrighted. And then we can watch Listen, as can much compare? as possible. So, this is the video I wanted to watch. Apples to apples here. He's tall. Okay. He's handsome. I think he is. He's physically fit. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. You do realize I'm better looking than you. What are you talking about? I look like a big, swollen, bloated corpse. Right? Look at the jowls. Ack, ack, ack. <laughs> band, 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 band. The camera's been on the whole time. I'm actually a virgin. <gasps> See this fucking piece of garbage disc? <laughs> Thanks for the money, stupid fuck. Yep, muscular men and G-strings, Good morning, man. everyone. This is actually probably going to be smaller kind of the string. show in a lot of ways. After having a very the short segment yesterday spend. about him, apparently LTG has done a lengthy response. I start to get messages saying, did you hear what LTG... Hey, let's be honest, guys. Everything LTG does is lengthy. LTG just said about you. He's going on a big rant about you on his stream. I have not fully seen it yet, and it's about 10 minutes. That's all about me, and apparently there's a lot of insulting stuff. We're going to watch it together live on today's podcast. I don't recall saying anything. That Dude, now he... Wait, so DSP is addressing drama on his streams now? Oh, wow, dude. I thought people came for chill, positive, meaningful content, not stupid drama bullshit. Interesting. I guess he, the tips really are fucking low. That would have been like inflammatory. I wasn't insulting the dude or anything like that, but apparently, yeah, he took this as all personal insults. So we're going to watch that live on this very show. Why? Because I want to focus on drama all day long to get any kind of attention. Basically, I have to become a nonstop drama idiot. Fair enough. So we're going to do that soon. But uh, last night, I played GTA 5 again. The views on the playthrough are crazy good, even the streams. But last night was genuinely kind of a slow stream for support. That kind of sucks. I'm uh, you had a lot of people watching you, DSP. That's not slow for support. That just means people didn't shower you with fucking super berries. 
I don't know. Like, I love how support is equated to fucking just monetary donations when it comes to content creation. Like, I don't know, dude. Personally, I'm just happy I have people watching. But, hey, you know, to each their own, right? Because I feel like if you have, like, good content, good engagement, and people like what you're doing, the support will follow. So he should be happy that he has all those people in there watching it because there's a chance that that might translate into donations, but he expects, like, a direct conversion rate, I guess. Like, everybody's got to drop $10 at the fucking door. I'm really enjoying the playthrough, but I hope that they'll also support it, being that it's a regular stream of mine. You know what I mean? Like, I hope that things turn out well for it as, a, as an ongoing project, especially because I told you guys I want to do all the content that I missed in my first run. There were no super chats coming in, so hopefully you guys will check it out and support it if you can, all right? Please consider contributing to the playthrough if you can, whether it be like a, you know, a super sticker or a tip or whatever. Okay, I think we're going to do it. This is what everyone wants. What's hilarious is we have 509 people on my stream. I guarantee you the restreamers probably have thousands of viewers right now. In fact, anyone want to check that? I'm just curious. Can you guys tell me how many people... Why is that, Phil? ...who are actually watching? And by the way, hello, restreamers. I know right now, literally, they have probably thousands of people watching. Anyway. Yeah, because you're looking at their streams. <laughs> I saw it with the five. Yeah, it's definitely copyrighted, man. End it with the... Wait. End it. That anal warning pops up. Yep, it's all good, man. We'll watch it at the end, so that way it should be all right. Hmm. All right, guys, so you see my stream layout. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to LTG's layout. Wow, nice and clean. Immediately, I know exactly where to look and what's going on on this stream. Yo, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> he looks like Steve Harvey. Did LTG actually shave his head? Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Now listen, more power to him, do whatever you want. But like for me, when I'm doing my own stream. It's a filter? Okay, I was about to say, bro, what the fuck? I want to make it 95% about the game. Like that's the focus of me streaming. I was game, about right? to say, he there's no way he shaved his head. Box, and then there's a chats all over. How many restreams are we looking at? We're going to be watching a restream. But now there's people that are restreaming this stream. So if you're watching a restreamer restream my stream, but I'm watching a restream of LTG stream, that's quadriception, inception, doubleception, triception, and quadriception. A quadriception stream. <laughs> a stream within a stream within a stream within a stream. It's very exciting. Anyway, we're going to start. Thank you to 672 who did a super chat. He says LTG is a fan of the British Broadcasting Corporation. See the BBC slightly protruded to the left? Oh, excellent. I'm sure he loves Downton Abbey. We're going to get into this. You ready? React to what who said about me? He watched what? Here we go. You know, no matter how much you guys try to push it, there will never be an interaction between me and DSP. There's there's no ties there. Why y'all keep trying to push that narrative? Yeah, stop trying to push that narrative. What narrative is he talking about? I literally just said, I watched That low tier god is the black DSP. I love how DSP completely ignores that shit. For years, he used to bitch that people compared him and Low Tier God, saying that Low Tier God was the black DSP. And Low Tier God fucking hates being compared to DSP, which I don't blame him because being compared to DSP is like probably the biggest insult you could have as a content creator. But yeah content for the first time i didn't like his stream layout i think it's kind of busy there's stuff all over the place is confusing and i wish that there was more of the game on the screen what else um geez let's see i'm just trying to think like what what narrative was there was no narrative oh i guess i said that um it was weird to me that he, had, he was only two star diamond if he's been playing the game since launch right he had two thousand viewers on his stream but it didn't seem like he had two thousand viewers because his stream chat wasn't like flying by like someone who has two thousand viewers and in addition i didn't really he probably has it in slow mode you tarred Really see contributions coming in. If you have 2,000 viewers, why are you not having anyone contribute to your stream? It's odd. I hope that. Listen to him, dude. Phil, why are you pocket watching? Why do you care? Maybe Low Tier God is happy he has 2,000 people watching his stream. I can't afford this. Just because everyone doesn't fucking pester their audience for constant tips and donations. Doesn't mean they're not making money. That it's not that he has all hate watchers who just sit there to make fun of him. But it seemed like that because his chat was making fun of him. You see? That's not a name. So you mean he can take a joke and doesn't ban people for making fun of him? Got it. Narrative? That's an observation. How can somebody that was too scared to do a, 
a podcast for 50 bands talk crazy about me. It's just sit there with your fucking porn goatee. <laughs> You mentioned the goatee. And you didn't want to free 50 bands? Like, huh? So hold on. Because I decided I didn't want to be on a podcast run by Keemstar. He doesn't want to talk to me. What? What does that have to do with anything? First of all, I was never even offered the money. It means you're not a fucking serious person, bro. Money. I already talked to this guy. I was blue in the face. I don't want to do with Keemstar and do any business with him. I don't want to be on any show that's called the Lol Cow Cast because it's disrespectful. I'm not going to take 50 grand from Keemstar and be indebted to this guy for the rest of my life and have to basically be his slave. It wasn't, oh, just sit here like a lump, right? Doing a weekly podcast is not being Keemstar's slave. And do nothing. Receive 50k. It's ridiculous. It's not what it was going to be. But what is this? It was literally you showing up once a week to talk into a microphone. That's what it was going to be. What have to do with him? And that was just the signing bonus. You were going to get paid on top of that. Oh, why is he so hung up about the fact that I didn't take $50,000 to be on Keemstar's podcast? Because you're a whole ass clown, bro. You're not a serious person. You're a fucking joke. Hmm. Almost as if maybe, maybe he's a little jealous. Maybe he wanted to be, take 50 grand to be on a podcast. That's why he thinks it's so easy. Oh, I could, it's an easy 50. I could have made that too. I wish I got offered that because I would have taken it, right? Like Any insane human gym, being would have taken that. Speak to me. On top of that, if you're not properly groomed, you can't speak to me. On top of that, if your voice box and vocal cords never deepen, <laughs> you can't speak to me. If you're five foot something, you can't speak to what? me. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. Fuck. Well, that's a lot to un- I can't speak to low tier god. Shit. Pack right there. That was a ton. All right, so what do you say first? If you don't hit the gym daily, you can't speak to me. Okay, it's a little weird. Dude, people show up for the whole gimmick of low tier god banning people for stupid reasons. Like, that's what everybody fucking likes. You know, people love that low tier god bans people for like, you know, stupid fucking reasons. That's like his whole gimmick. If someone has an ugly goatee in 2023, you can't speak to me. It's actually called a Van Dyke, by the way. The full mustache into under your chin. This is called a Van Dyke. It's technically not a goatee. A goatee is just this. The Van Dyke is the whole thing. Just for the record. What was the third thing he said? He said All right, three Droopy. things. Oh, he says if you're five foot something, don't speak to me. I'm literally like five foot eleven and a half. I'm not ashamed of my height. I'm six feet tall. I'm Dog, six that's feet tall. such coke. I'm five foot eleven and a half. Bruh. Dude, you're five eleven. Chill the fuck out. Feet tall. I'm six feet tall. I'm not ashamed of my height. I mean, yeah, my wife cares about it, but that's about <laughs> it. My wife. It, like, she's the only one on this planet who should. I'm, what, half an inch below six feet? I can't speak to him like because of a half an inch. Huh? What are you talking about? My comments about the man were about his stream and about his ranking in Street Fighter 6. He comes back at me with, you're unkept, you're not groomed well enough, you don't work out, and you're short. <laughs> Based. Really disconnect here, I feel. It seems like we're talking about two different things. Why is he so hung up about how I look? It's a little odd, isn't it? Why does that- Because he's the peanut butter complexion stallion, and he doesn't want a bunch of the ugly ass bums Serving him strawberries cut to precise wearing speedos. Bother him so much? And what in the holy hell does it have to do with anything that I said about him yesterday? Why does this man care about why another man streamer looks? Like, what's going on there? I'm a little confused. Guys, I'm coming out the closet. Oh, let's continue. If you never upgraded your camera quality to pristine for your audience. Wait, 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 wait. What? If I didn't upgrade my camera quality to pristine, you can't speak to me. Hold on a second. Let's do a little experiment, shall we? So here's my camera, and here's LTG's camera. Dude, look you're watching a restream. Let's look at them side by side. Uh, hmm. Which camera looks better, guys? Which camera has the better lighting? Which camera has the better quality? Look at, look at our camera. Like, what is he talking about here? He's talking shit. My video Dude, he's literally watching a restream through a fucking filter, acting like his camera quality is top notch. No footage looks better than his. What he's saying is completely outdated. Like, if you had said that a year ago, I'd say, yeah, you're right. My camera used to be shit. Okay, let's continue. We are not on the same level. We are not in the same space. 
I'm low tier God. I don't even know what the DSP is, bro. Stop trying to push that narrative. What narrative? I don't know what narrative he's talking about. I don't know what the narrative is. I wasn't aware there was a narrative. I don't know why people say he's the black DSP. That doesn't make sense. I don't see the comparison. If I was him, I would literally focus on trying to rebuild my brand, like get hair transplant surgery or wear hats 24 seven on streams. <laughs> it's not even crispy lined up, bro. Again, what is he talking about? How is it personally an affront to him and his existence? that I have facial hair he doesn't like. The other funny part is that he says he's like a patchy, unlined up goatee. My goatee is perfectly lined up, but it's all white hair, so it looks like shit. <laughs> then why don't you get a dye kit? <laughs> I live in denial. I know I'm older. I'm not afraid of embracing my age. I'm gonna look older. I'm gonna get white hair. It's something that naturally happens. It's not something to be ashamed about as you get older. You're not gonna be eternally 20 years old. You have to understand that. You have to accept that. Or you can pretend forever like you're some youth. And yeah, this is some cope, bro. I'm in denial. I don't really give a shit about my goatee being perfect or whatever. I actually always look like shit. I wake up and I look in the mirror. I'm like, oh, I'm disgusted at myself. What kind of a vain existence is that? That you only speak to people who you find attractive? Uh, Lord Pothead Investor with the five. Did you know the Fed raised interest rates again? Uh, get ready for more layoffs. Uh, it's just a uh, 25 basis point, so it's not a huge hike. But yeah, it's going to keep going up for a while. They're going to eventually have to drop the interest rates, though, because the economy is going to fucking stagnate. Jasper, please relax. Three minutes into his response, and he hasn't actually responded. He hasn't said a word about anything I said. All he's done is insulted my looks for three straight minutes, no? Literally hasn't said a word about anything that I said yet. It's interesting. Okay. Don't speak to me. If that, if that nigga wants to rent me for his stream, yo, DSP, how many five bands, bro? Five what? Five bands? What the hell is he talking about? You, I'm gonna do five bands? I, huh? Five bands and- He knew what 50 bands was earlier. But now he doesn't know what five bands means. Got it. 50 racks. I literally have... Oh, and Daryl's in with the two. Griffin will end up like DSP and have that goatee. Nope. I will not have facial hair. No idea what he's talking about. At all. Dude, I'm white. If you're talking to a public audience, you use English. I don't know if you've heard about it yet. You might want to <laughs> I'm white. Use English. Start using it. Racks and and, ra and bands. And it's called money. He wants me to pay him $5,000 to be in my content. It's kind of weird. We need to do an Urban Dictionary stream because you're lacking. Don't mention me again. There is no beef. I agree there's no beef. I don't have beef with this guy. I don't know why he's like insulting me. Focus on your sexy, bro. Focus on my sexy? My sexy. Another <laughs> male streamer wants me to focus on my sexy. Damn right. Because this is low tier god. This is very weird. He said sexy about me. That's disturbing. That's a little weird. You look at real pale and shit on, on stream. Like I'm a streamer, dude. I stream all day. Of course I'm looking pale. Action figures in the back, teddy bears. My old setup, right? Before I started actually- Action figures and teddy bears. Now DSP is gonna fucking damage control that putting out nice 8-bit art. He definitely has not seen a stream of mine. So he's talking out of his butt about my old setup, basically. Worry about the poverty Oh, that nice 8-bit art. Poverty stream. Isn't poverty trying to scrape by or whatever? Like, actually- That's literally what you fucking do. Heard that term come up earlier this year. Okay, so I went through a bankruptcy. That was years ago. You guys have been very supportive this year. Oh, so you're financially fine. Okay, no more begging. No more complaining about support being low endeavors that i've done right I'm is dsp really gonna fucking try and flex financially now I'm back on my feet now what where is the poverty status exactly what poverty streaming what people do is they reference like a stream i did four years ago the reveal of jasper stream where i raised a thousand dollars on a stream and i said hey guys guess what i have a pet dude his ego is out of fucking control he can't stand that anyone fucking dares to you know talk shit about him so now he's gonna overplay his financial success in my streams from now on, right? Stuff like that. When was the last time that I did a, an emergency fundraiser stream? Three, four years ago? I don't do that stuff. This hasn't happened in years. I've, I've actively tried to stop with the overshilling and all of that. I'm trying to do my best here to improve. All right, when you say he was talking mad slick, oh, here we okay, go. what was he saying? So now he wants to know. How do you talk mad slick about me? Basically, he just went on a tirade insulting my looks and has no idea what I even talked about yesterday. That's, that's 
fascinating. Wow. Guys, what's, what's wrong with my stream layout? What's wrong with this stream layout? All right, let's take a look. His entire top of his screen is completely cluttered. The game's here. Your camera's here. The chat is here. There's a leaderboard up here. There's a scroll bar down here. At no point do you have any idea where to look. Because, oh, huh, who, huh, what, huh, who, huh, huh, huh. Look in the chat right now. What is useful in that chat? He was saying you're trash at Street Fighter. Didn't say that. So that's a lie. Easy clap that snow rog ass. What? He said you're not higher in diamond or master tank you trash. What? I watched the same video. He didn't really say anything wild. Okay. One intelligent comment so far in the chat. So out of that entire chat, one comment was worth putting on the screen if that, and he could have just read it out. Get rid of that chat. There's no reason to have that chat at all. I want to see the game. I, you know, and I can't see the game. There's just too much clutter all over the screen. Put more of the game on the screen for sure. Oh that my chat God, has to go. It dude. It doesn't add anything to the stream. So my stream layout, what else? I rage quit, which I don't do in Street Fighter 6. Didn't say, uh, I, I never said he rage quit. They're lying to him. His chat is outright lying to him. He's reacting to things that didn't happen. Oh my I god. Say he, he doesn't rage quit at all. He's criticizing my stream setup. And his background is a cat tree, a bunch of hexagons on a wall, and what appears to be a colorful heart-shaped pillow on the floor. Like, what? It's a Marikami rug. What? I don't see, like, how are you criticizing mine? My setup now is better than I deserve. Pertinent artwork, ambient lighting. Like you would expect this. I'm gonna I'm gonna be a streamer with thousands of viewers, and no one's tuning into Dark Side Phil, right? He's completely talking out of his ass, completely outdated stuff. Everything he's saying is fake or, or wrong or outdated. You don't need donations to have a successful stream on Twitch. But I guess when you're not keen to business, when you turn down a fifty thousand dollar bag. Here we go again. I'm not keen to business because I turned down a fifty thousand dollar podcast that was never offered to me. Why is he so obsessed with this fifty thousand dollar Keemstar podcast? He wanted to be on that podcast so bad. Dude, there's a reason why you keep bringing it up. He wants that bag so bad. He's got two thousand viewers on his stream, but literally no one was contributing there's one text to speech in the entire hour highlight that I watched. I'll just diss low tier god and maybe I'll get some of his trolls in my stream and my stream will pick up. I didn't diss low tier god. Very neutral observation about his stream. I wasn't looking to insult the guy whatsoever. He's just talking out of his ass. Focus on that hairline, bro. Use. How about this? Your next stream goal? Here we go. Should say turkey transplant hairline trip. <laughs> Sexy side <laughs> fill. Who cares about how I look? Dude, I'm a game streamer. I can come out looking like Jabba the Hutt. Why are you so hung up on looks? Does he think that he's like a movie star or something? He's the peanut butter complexion stallion, bro. To him, everything is about looks, right? I'm being told he wanted to get into Hollywood, but he can't act. He's a wannabe actor. He's so vain. He's like such a vain individual. Symmetrical jawline, crispy hairline, peanut butter complexion. What does peanut butter <laughs> yeah, complexion dude. mean? When I think the peanut butter complexion, let's fucking go. Peanut butter? You wanna know what I think about? Jif chunky peanut butter, smearing it on your face and having like big chunks of peanut all over your face and shit. I don't see that as a compliment. Ladies and gentlemen, you wanna know who LTG is? He's the black Johnny Bravo. He is so obsessed with himself and everyone around him is laughing, but he doesn't get the joke. That's exactly what I look for in a streamer. I don't care what kind of content they're putting out. Yo. Give me that perfect hairline and the peanut butter complexion. I'm on that stream throwing thousands of dollars at that person. And he can't understand it. Everyone else is laughing at him every time he mentions it. No one cares about how you look, bro. No one. Dude, it's almost like that's his entire fucking shtick. Holy fuck, DSP. It's his entire fucking character. This Walmart NPC that I would just pass by. When I'm picking up walnuts. I'm an NPC you would walk <laughs> walnuts. by when you're picking up walnuts. <laughs> wow. Don't you have a podcast to do for 50 bands? Yo, he brought it up again. Can someone count in this clip how many times he mentioned the Keemstar podcast? Dude, this guy is obsessed with that podcast. He so wanted to be on that podcast. He's so jealous and upset that he didn't get offered that money. Dude, you're bringing in on a monthly basis six to seven grand. You're probably clearing 100K in a year. So why is he so worried about a 50K podcast? Someone's offering you 50K for a podcast and this is so big to you? Yeah, it's just basically him trying to steal my clout, whatever. What clout am I trying to steal? How many- He's definitely more clouded than you, DSP. Insane amount of contributions that I get on today's stream. I think I got like four super chats. Monetize the haters. What clout do you have? Really, like what benefit do I have at all from having interaction with you? I didn't even- Then why are you reacting to his video if you don't get any benefit?
didn't know about you until people started telling me they were calling you the black DSP. So if anything, you were getting clout off of my name. Here's the absolute truth. The one thing that would benefit- That's right, man. DSP is the clout god of YouTube. ...benefit both of us would be to have a match in Street Fighter VI, and we just go at it, and we have a good time, and I think that people on both sides, his fans, my fans, his haters, my haters, would all eat it up and love it. And the thing is, there's no Keemstar orchestrating his puppetry into the situation. It would just be the two of us having a match that everyone would enjoy. People would love that, right? It's a win-win situation. You're not a pro player. Do you care if you lose? I watched your stream. You were constantly getting pummeled. It doesn't seem like you really care too much about wins and losses. I don't even think he was really beating his meat on stream. What? I think that was a failed attempt at trying to make some buzz around his name, bro. <laughs> Yes! Oh my word. I mean, I, how do you even respond to that? It's obviously going to be the most embarrassing moment that's ever happened to me in my life. I will never live it down. There will always be- It's not even that embarrassing. Like, if Phil would have just come out and owned it, it could have been a great, like, positive moment for him. Like, I don't even think it's that embarrassing, dude. Like, you didn't see his dick. Who cares? I don't understand how that's, like, so fucking embarrassing. Like, if that, like, let's say that shit happened to me, dude. Like, let's say I was streaming with a fucking face cam on, and I thought the camera was off, and, like, I wasn't streaming yet, and, like, everybody saw me, like, thrust my head back, like, full force in pure <laughs> uncut pleasure. I don't fucking know. Like, I feel like it'd be funny. I don't know, dude. Like, I'd laugh my fucking ass off. And I would make a big fucking meme out of it and make a shit ton of money from it. Because it's fucking funny. It's not a big deal, dude. Like, your fucking Isaac Hemmler shit should be more embarrassing than fucking accidentally jerking off on stream and no one seeing anything. You know? <laughs> I feel like that's, like, that's, like, not even that big a deal. I don't understand why he's, like, so fucking upset about that thing. I would be more embarrassed about the fucking, you know, Isaac Hemmler shit or my uh, Sleeping Dogs playthrough where I'm, like, literally making these fucking awful stereotypical jokes and racist jokes and shit like that. Like, that's more embarrassing, I feel like, than, you know rubbing one out real quick in what you thought was before you started the stream. Who cares? I mean, everybody, if they're being honest, has busted a quick nut if they needed to, like, hop in a fucking business meeting or some shit quickly. Or, you know, they're in between classes or some shit. Like, I don't, I don't fucking know, dude. I don't really feel like that's that big a deal. Personally, but... People who remember me for that, correct? And there's nothing I can do about like, it. Like, shit, you could be like that CNN guy who jerked off during the fucking meeting thinking that his camera was off. Do y'all remember that shit? Do y'all remember that shit? The guy on CNN who was in the meeting on Zoom and he thought his camera was off and he was, like, literally jerking off, like, in front of the fucking camera. <laughs> That's like he was in the fucking meeting and just stroking his meat, bro. That is wild. Like it's one thing to do it before or after a meeting, but during the fucking meeting, you're whipping your dick out, just stroking dog. Like, damn. He must have been getting fucking real upset by one of the chicks in my call. I have no idea, man. That shit was crazy. I've learned to live with it and laugh at it. It's not a big deal. But why would I have... Yeah, he even stood up for it, insane. too. What would the benefit have been? He literally reenacted it. That's really funny. Now use some of that money you might get off reacting to my shit to rebuild your hair line. All right, I'll take the $48 of Super Chats to go buy some Rogaine. How about this? Take some of the money you make every month from your 3,000 paid subs on Twitch and go see a psychiatrist about your problems that you project onto others. No one cares about how a streamer looks. Oh, he is jealous. The 3,000 subs on Twitch. Yep, he's jealous. Care about the podcast I turned down? 
She didn't care about my camera quality. She didn't care about any of that shit. Go work on yourself in your glass house before you start throwing stones at people out of it. Why do you think you have 2,000 people on your stream? Because people love you? No, it's because people laugh at you. Like I said, you're the black Johnny Bravo. They care about- Yes, DSP. Low tier God is self-aware of why people enjoy watching him. <laughs> Unlike you. When you're playing Street Fighter 6 and you get your ass whooped and you quit to the dashboard because you're so embarrassed to see your character die during the round. The fact that you just made a 10 minute rant about me and you literally didn't even watch the video. Wow. I just wanted to get it done with because today I'm playing with Rashid in Street Fighter 6. I just wanted to get this out of the way. So now we can have a fun Rashid day and not have to worry about everyone. Did you hear what LTG said? Did you hear what LTG said? Well, now I did. 10 minutes is probably the most bullshit I've ever heard. Wait, there's still a minute left? I thought we were done. Your midsection has at least five to six creases. My midsection has five to <laughs> six creases. Now he wants to see my abs or lack thereof. He wants to see No, the your midsection's your fucking stomach, bruh. From when you, you sit down, your fucking fat rolls. Abs. He wants to see the crease. How much weight? Look how much weight I've lost. Look, I'm not sucking my my stomach in. Look, there's no there's no roll of fat there. You yes, see? there is. You can see it. I lost all that weight. Now, I'm not ideal. My ideal weight is 185. I want to be 185 again, but I have to actually actively be working out to hit that again, like I used to. Dude, if you're 185, you definitely still have some stomach fat. But he's not 185. He's like 200 something, so he definitely has fucking fat. To be when I was younger. Here's where I don't lose it, the jowls, because when you're older, you can't lose this. Like, there's nothing you can do about that. I criticized your gameplay and your stream. You literally haven't criticized my gameplay or my stream at all yet, because you haven't watched it. You're just talking out of your ass. Now let's turn on the layout that he probably dislikes. Look at his layout. Look how small the game is. Not even 50% of his screen. You're a game streamer. People tune in to watch you play a video game. Then why does he have more viewers than you if you're such a fucking pro? I can't afford this! Uh, Benji plays with the two, can you sh Uh, if it's on YouTube, yeah, I can pull it up. Why not, in fact, why not increase, exponentially increase the size of your webcam to be the entire upper left quadrant of your ca and then put the game, the size of your webcam in the bottom right hand corner. Do that, because that's what you're all about, right? You're all about your looks, so just why not focus on your looks and just stare at yourself all day on stream? No one will even care when you quit the dashboard and shit then, because no one can see it. <laughs> your layout sucks. Really, it does, it's bad. His cat tree, weird colored heart pillow on the floor, and all the weird hexagons on his back wall are somehow better than my layout, which is gaming related with ambient lighting. I guess that's better, according to him. Good for you. Look at him right now. Nice Faye Valentine shirt. Yeah, Cowboy Bebop, that incredibly overexposed anime that was on Cartoon Network for like 17 years and actually wasn't that good. Criticizing the shirt, stupid. Call him chicken legs instead. Nice necklace that you're wearing on the outside of your shirt. So it's nice how you're wearing jewelry on the outside of your clothes. People want me to stop. They're like, calm down. Yeah, DSP, why wouldn't you have your jewelry out on the outside of your shirt? Why would you wear jewelry if no one can fucking see that you're wearing jewelry? I'm getting too worked up. Like, <laughs> I criticize the gameplay, but somehow I'm in the wrong because I'm ugly and I'm short and I turned down a 50k podcast. That's like saying you should wear a bunch of bracelets, but you should always have on long sleeves that cover it. Like, wear a fucking hoodie that covers up your Rolex. <laughs> okay. Really, someone's got to ask this man why he cares so much about how another male streamer looks. That's a little odd to me. You know, a little, a little bizarre. I didn't even know about this. He reacted to my interview with side scrollers, and he shat all over me during the interview and said all kinds of nasty things about me. But I can't react to a documentary about him. It's funny how the door doesn't really swing both ways. Anyone can do whatever they want to me, but God forbid that Phil ever give anything back. Oh, it's not allowed, right? So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed me reacting to that. Of the 800 people on my stream right now watching, none of you guys are going to stick around for Rashid and Street Fighter 6. You were here for the drama, right? So how does it benefit me? Like I said, you want something that mutually benefits. The only thing that I can think of that we could do is actually have a set in Street Fighter 6 and both of our fan He's so our desperate to fucking love collab, you know bro. That. And here's the thing. If it's so important to you to raise the $5,000, say to your fans, hey, raise $5,000 and I'll play DSP. Duh. If it's so important to you, appeal to your own fans, fund the money. If they are so he desperately you wants that fucking LTG cloud, that, probably bro. throw all this money at you. And if you don't kick my ass, you still got $5,000. It's a win-win situation. All that being said, it's time for a celebratory bubble blow because we hit 100 likes on my stream. That ruby and sapphire music though in the background. Yeah! Bubbles!
How you like that? I forget what the oh my town God. is. I think this is a pretty good fun podcast. Which no. theme was Do I that? honestly I'm believe LTG would ever fight me in Street Fighter 6? No. I don't. This guy's looking for Fuck, a crazy no, payday. That's why he's upset. He didn't get his 50k payday to be on the LOL Cow cast, which he obviously wanted. And he's so upset that I turned it down. Ruby, that his money, Sapphire, right? So maybe if someone offered him 50k, maybe he would do it. I don't know. Theme. But you pretty much just exposed yourself. You just admitted you won't do anything unless you're getting paid big money for it, right? I don't think it's going to happen. See, you want to know when the best time would be to do it? During Evo. Now, I don't know if he's going to Evo. He's banned from Evo. How did he get banned from Evo? Miggit said that the, the match is so hype that people who are at Evo watch us play each other on the internet instead of what's going on at Evo. That's exactly Sleepboard? how you do it. I'm not even kidding you. Him versus me, first to 10. That would get more views than anything broadcast yep. at Evo. You know it. We'll do it during Evo. Set that shit up. But someone's got to pay him $5,000. Okay? Why didn't you fight Rich from Review Tech USA and Street Fighter when he told you he wanted to once? Me spanking, stuttering Craig or Rich. That shit's nostalgic as fuck, dude. That shit's mad fucking nostalgic. I spent so much time playing Ruby and uh, Emerald back in the day. Bitch in Street Fighter is a waste of everyone's time. No one cares. Now, I said my piece. It's out there. No one's going to come to my Rashid stream today and bother me about this bullshit. Did you see what LTG said? What do you have to say about that? I already said it. So, go reference that and leave me alone. All right? There you go. Yeah, man. I'm cooking LTG. Oh, yeah, I cooked him. He just like exploded. <laughs> that fucking thumbnail, dude, with the big titty. Oh my god. I like this channel for uh, DSP clips because they're like super edited and right to the uh, fucking point. All right, so let's see. CNN masturbate. Let's see. So what's the dude's name? Jeffrey Tubin. <laughs> he was Lubin the Tubin. They probably have it like uh Welcome to another episode of This Thing. My name is Phil Balabanos. I'm Pat. You can see in the images, people <laughs> were still... Jeffrey! Like, Jeffrey! Your camera's on! Jeffrey! Like, you know, right, my camera's on. Like, he was just... Like, I've been a naughty fat time. piggy. Yeah. But he... There he is, man. There it is. That is the actual fucking footage. He stripped butt-ass naked. Cock out. Standing in front of the fucking camera, stroking his meat. Hey, here's the thing, Tubin. I knew a man growing up that whenever he had to take a shit, he too would take off all his clothes, including his socks, even in public restrooms. How does this track? I want to see if the actual footage. Disgrace journalist Jeffrey Tubin staying out of the public eye right now after exposing himself to his colleagues during shall not be allowed in a virtual workplace. Nothing's so, changed. It isn't allowed. It wasn't yeah, then and it isn't now, period. Let me ask you this, though, because according to the reports, his coworkers claimed like he acted nothing happened when they all got back on the Zoom call, right? So what rights do... Damn, bro. You're probably going to have to find the footage on, like, Twitter or something. Can I actually hop on his call since I'm not on this account? Hi, Sean. Page, are we on? I'm sorry, we're on page 12, the second graph from the top. Okay. Uh, Turn your camera off. 
All right. So if you look, uh, we're a 0.15 percent higher than 2019. Uh, uh, we started this quarter off at 2.75 percent. Holy shit! Oh, this is the actual fucking footage. Here we go. Uh, God, I don't think he's anywhere. Oh Oh my god. 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 Oh in like front of the camera, cock swinging out. Like you can find the full video. It's out there. But yeah, it's pretty crazy, man. Like he couldn't just wait until he was done working. Like, bruh, get out of your fucking call before you whip your cock out. Like the fuck. That shit's wild. All right, so 46 seconds. The CGI looks really fucking off in this movie. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but, like, CGI has been getting worse and worse in recent years in a lot of movies. You already did. You already did. <laughs> Dude, it does look like a TV commercial. I don't know, dude. It does look like a TV commercial. All right, guys. It is fucking five o'clock for me. I'm going to hop off. Have a wonderful Saturday, everyone. Appreciate y'all coming out. Appreciate all the support as well. Hopefully, y'all have a, a great weekend, and I will talk to y'all later. Peace out, everybody. Respect trans kids, affirm trans rights, stand with Ukraine, Black Lives Matter, trans visibility is valid.